Creighton Durham Hall football is on the air as we welcome you to O'Shaughnessy Stadium in St. Paul, the home of Creighton Durham Raider football. Matt Nelson, so happy to be back with you alongside of engineer Glenn Thompson. It was an enjoyable summer in 2017, but now those warm nights spent up on the cabin sitting on the lake give way to the cool fall nights at the football stadium and brand new field turf here as well at O'Shaughnessy Stadium, the first ever game on this new surface. Tonight, the Raiders host Totino Grace and the Eagles, the defending Class 6A state champions in what many have called the best game in week one in the state of Minnesota. Earlier on, I caught up with Coach Brooks Bollinger entering his second season, and we talked about how the summer went. Good. You know, great North. Uh, we have a good group of seniors um, coming back and, and some strong leadership throughout the summer, which is, has been nice coming into uh, my second year as, as head coach. And uh, it's been fun to, to watch those guys grow up and, and take the reins and, and influence the culture of, of our team and, and get us going in the right direction. And, and overall, we had a positive summer in the weight room and um, on the practice field so far and just ready to kick it off. Let's talk about a position on your team that has to be near and dear to your heart. You were a great quarterback. Uh, how does this team shape up uh, depth-wise and in the starting spot uh, under center? Well, you know, it's uh, it's good. We got we got a few guys that can help us there, and, and we got some good evening, some football fans. Uh, the Minnesota State High School League in the hall. Um, you know, Dan Callahan's a junior that's that's been great for us, and um, he'll be ready to. Um, to get us going tonight. Do you like that? Do you like having the option against, depending on what kind of a, a matchup you have on any given week, based on what a defense does well in, the, in their secondary, in their front seven, being able to throw a, a couple of different quarterbacks at them that might have a different skill set and that might be uh, might excel at a certain part of the game that maybe the other one doesn't? Well, you know, I think that, um, you know, it's a... Uh, it's something where you, you want to have, um, you know, a guy at that position that can lead your team. And, and sometimes it's one guy and sometimes it's multiple guys. So I think it's really based on the situation. Um, and, and we're fortunate to have guys that are bought in to, uh, to what we're doing and, and who we are as a team. And um, I feel comfortable with it, with it right now. So um, there, there, I think with that position, um, there is no um, – it's more of an art than a science. You know, there's no one answer. Um, it's just a, it's a situation by situation basis. How about on defense? Uh, you guys had so many playmakers last season on the defensive side of the football. How do you feel heading into this season about uh, about defense? Well, you know, we got a lot of veterans, especially in the back end. I mean, I think that's um, that's, that's that's the most uh, experience we have on our team. And uh, after James Williams and, and a couple other guys that have been around a long time, um, and maybe some depth behind them. Um, so it's a, I think the back end's strong. I think we have a, a quick group back there uh, with some speed. And, you know, up front on both sides, it's, uh, we're asking a, a group of guys to kind of platoon it. Um, both ways, and we certainly have some talented players there, some guys playing some new spots, um, and we have a talented group that, um, you know, better be in shape to, to get a lot of reps. From my viewpoint, high above the 50-yard line, this looks like a team that at times, like you said, the the experience in the secondary, uh, that they're going to be able to turn over some teams and, and give that offense great field position. That, that's really got to be the hallmark of your defense, doesn't it, is big plays uh, and forcing turnovers. Yeah, you know, I I, I, th I think we we look at it and there's there's a lot of guys that have played football throughout the defense and, and you know we really um, we should have a strong group over there and, and guys that just really feed off each other. But yeah, I mean that it, it, it's led by that group again, especially with with James uh, being a captain and Matthew Cunningham's the other guy that really came on last year. It's um, another captain for us that. Uh, has really like, turned into a heck of a football player. So uh, I think we can, can put some pressure from the back end and put some um, put some stress on some teams on the edges. And um, but you know, like anything on both sides of the ball, we're just trying to, especially early in the year. You, you know, you've seen enough of these games that trying to get out there and, and play clean, play sound football, play good assignments, um, keep pounding that with the kids, especially the guys that um, maybe aren't as experienced. 
Real challenge tonight. Uh, Totino Grace comes into St. Paul. I was surprised to read that this was the first meeting between these two traditional powerhouse programs. Everybody knows what Totino Grace did last year in winning that state tournament uh, at U.S. Bank Stadium. This is a real challenge for your team. What, how much do you know about the 2017 edition of Totino Grace? Yeah, I, you know, they have some similarities in, to us and, and probably every team in the state in that um, they, they have some new guys filling in, right? And I think it's always a part of the part of the uncertainty going into week one is, you know, you exchange scrimmage film and, and you, you have a little bit of understanding of who they are, but uh, there's not a ton of film out there. And, and a lot of their guys that played for them last year, graduated um but a program like that um they they just reload you know and, and plug new guys in so um you know we basically i my philosophy is um have a ton of respect for them but uh spend the majority of, of our time on our guys understanding what their roles and responsibilities are and how to play good sound football and and then hopefully they're in a position tonight where you know, they feel confident enough that they can just go out and cut it loose and play fast. Well, we know there's going to be a lot of eyes on this game tonight. I saw it was voted the number one game in Minnesota for high school football here in week one. Everybody's excited about it. I sense a great buzz. We'll get you out of here on this one. Uh, Coach Bollinger joining us on our Creighton Durham Hall Raider football pregame show. I'll get you out of here on this one. There's great buzz around this team. You're heading into this second season as the head coach for the Raiders. As I read around the, the papers on both sides of the rivers, the, 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 the Mississippi, there's great buzz that this team could take that next big step in 2017 and kind of, and return to what it has been over the last, boy, 30, 40 years as it's been historically do your players read any of that? Do they pick up on any of that? The the buzz and the anticipation that this might be the year that the program, after seven wins last year, takes another big step forward towards returning to that state tournament. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm I'm sure they see all that in this day and age of Twitter and social media. It's hard not to see uh, a lot of different stuff, and certainly kids are uh, more plugged in than ever before. I, I think they're just excited to play football. You know, I mean, I think. Uh, we're, we're, we feel very fortunate. Uh, we talk about it all the time, you know, to who much is given, much is expected. And we understand that we are very fortunate to be a part of this program, both as players and as coaches. And we have a great responsibility um, to uphold the standard that has been set. But with that said, um, you know, we're defining that by how we approach each day, how hard we work how we treat each other as teammates, you know, we're, we're trying to focus on that stuff and, and let the winning take care of itself. You know, I think that um, we can't, there's some of that stuff that, that we can't always control, but I want my team to be focused on um, doing the little things right, playing good sound football and, and having a blast doing it. Whether you're buying, selling, or simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you'll want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock, who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion. Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Happy to support Creighton Durham Hall football is the Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul. For over 35 years, the attorneys at Hitchcock Law Firm have provided legal services to individuals and business clients. Their practice is focused in the areas of estate planning, probate and trust administration, real estate law, business law, general litigation, and sports law. Their approach focuses on each client's background, needs, and goals. For more details, visit their website, HitchcockFirm.com, or call 651-772-3401. The Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul. Proud supporters of Raider football here on TJSportsOnline.net. And a big thank you on this Raider pregame show to our sponsors, Hitchcock Real Estate and the Hitchcock Law Firm, as we've honored America with the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. And a big thank you as well to Brooks Bollinger. He heads into his second season as Raider head football coach coming off of a 
seven and three campaign the last season in 2016 that unfortunately ended at the hands of Eden Prairie Totino Grace and the Eagles on the visiting sideline their season ended against Eden Prairie as well but it ended in a 28 to 20 um, state championship victory the past uh, two seasons leading into that uh, ended in uh, heartbreak for Totino Grace falling at the hands of Osseo Dean Prairie before defeating Eden Prairie for that state championship last year at U.S. Bank Stadium. Hard to believe this. This is the first ever meeting between the Raiders and the Eagles, and it takes place right here in St. Paul. There you can see the Raiders getting fired up for this big week one matchup in St. Paul at O'Shaughnessy Stadium, the University of St. Thomas. Chance for us to reintroduce ourselves. Our engineer, as always, is the hardest working man in broadcasting. That is Glenn Thompson, and I'm Matt Nelson, the voice of Raider football. And I'm so happy that you're back with me for the 2017 season. Both teams just about ready to take the field for kickoff in this week one matchup. Jeff Ferguson, the head coach for Totino Grace and the Eagles out of the Northwest Suburban South. Brooks Bollinger, his second season. 23 state appearances for the Raiders, two-time state champions in 1999 and 2009. But the Raiders, 23 state tournament appearances have not been there since 2011. Nice little half moon hanging over the field here in St. Paul. Off to our south. Busy night for football in the Twin Cities. The Gophers at home at TCF Bank Stadium. The Vikings wrapping up their preseason schedule at U.S. Bank Stadium in Creighton Durham Hall, kicking off their season in St. Paul, the Raiders will receive the opening kickoff. All is on the tee. Jack Vettel does the kicking. Vettel raises his left arm in the air and under perfect 70 degree skies, the 2017 season is underway and that kickoff will be fielded on the far side of the field, the five yard line, back towards the middle of the field, across the 20, now to the 25 yard line, brings the Raiders and that's where the Raider offense will set up shop, that kick return, Darby return. Anderson, 20 yard return. And that is where Danny Callahan, the junior, six foot two, 196 pounder, will key the Raider offense. The big guys in front of him, Sean Brody, Sam Harris, Tommy Underwood, Wyatt Garrity, and Elijah DeCoster. They're the big ones in front of Callahan, who goes under center. And I formation behind him, and the tight end Prince moving from his right to left. I formation from the 25-yard line. They'll hand off on first down the Raiders across the 25-yard line. Out to the 28-yard line, a gain of three Czech yards for Anthony Check on first down. It'll be second and seven. Second down. The host of Totino Tacklers. Anthony Check getting the call early and running back. I talked to some of these coaches for Green Durham Home before the game, and I said, "What do you think is going to get the bulk of the carries? You've got Check listed number one on your depth chart, trying to replace the productions of a uh, Terrence Nash." And they said. Every position on the field week one is by committee. We still want to see what these young men can do. Callahan will hand off again. This is check across the 30-yard line, and he falls forward to the 34-yard line, close to the first down marker, but they'll call him a yard short. A gain of six yards for check. Back-to-back -back runs to open things up for the Raiders, and it'll be third down and short. So an early chance on third and short. A good test for this Raider. Offensive line against a tough front seven for Totino Grace. Third down and one. Again, it's check. He's met at the line of scrimmage, but on a second effort, has just enough for the first Anthony down. Check Again, a two yards for check. He needed down. one, and he got two of them. Inside, as we close in on two minutes into this week one matchup, Totino Grace and the Eagles swearing off against Creighton Durham Hall and the Raiders. The first ever meeting between these two teams. The Raiders have won nine out of their last ten season openers. First down and ten now for the Raiders. And they'll take it from their own 36-yard line with Callahan under center. One man checked behind him. Little trouble with the snap, but Callahan drops back. He's hit as he throws, and the pass is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Jalen Newton, but he was pressured around the edge. Stevens applied the pressure for Totino Grace. It'll be second down and 10 
after the first pass of the season for Danny Callahan, the junior, falls incomplete. Could have been much worse. All kinds of pressure coming around his blind side. Second and ten coming up. Second and ten. Last year, Totino Grace, they beat Eden Prairie 28-20 to for their 10th state title. Jeff Ferguson, their head coach. Second down and 10 with Callahan under center. He'll hand off check. He'll run it to the left. He has the edge around the 40-yard line. He fumbled it across the 50, and it's going to be recovered by Totino Grace at the 48-yard line. It is recovered by the Eagles. Jumping on the loose ball, Isaac Richards. Would have been a good gainer for check, but he lost the handle. And Richards jumped on it. Uh, now they're going to say he was down. So they're going to say he was down. Underwood on the carry. And they'll say that he was down. So they'll mark the football at the 44-yard line. And now an official timeout. And I think the idea is right now that they're going to move the ball back, not where it wound up after the fumble, but when Underwood lost his handle on the football. So that's what they do, Tony Underwood. A lucky break for the young Underwood. So they'll move it back to the 44-yard line. And they've, it'll be third down and short there, inside of 10 minutes on the clock here in the first quarter. So now they have the ball marked at the 44-yard line, and it's third and two. They have to get the ball to their own 46 for a first down under center. Callahan, wide receivers to his left and right, prints the tight end. They'll hand it off again. It's Underwood. He goes across the 45-yard line and picks up three yards. He's got a first down as Underwood carries to the 48-yard line, and the Raiders have another first down. Twice they've needed all three downs to move the chains. But twice on third and short, they've been able to get the push up front and check the first time around. Converts the third down. Second time around, it's Tony Underwood. So far, so good on the ground for the Raiders as they approach midfield. This ball's on their 48-yard line, and they'll hand off. This will be a short gain. Falling ahead to midfield is Anthony Check, the 5'10", 175-pound senior. And the clock winds 9.23 on the scoreboard here in the first quarter. No score if you're just joining us. We welcome you, Raiders and Eagles. A presentation of TJSportsOnline.net and Creighton Durham Hall High School. Brought to you by the Hitchcock Real Estate and the Hitchcock Law Firm. Our sponsors of the game, Raider sponsors of the game for this week one matchup. At midfield, it's second and eight. Callahan again, working primarily under center. He'll hand off and maybe picking up a yard on the carry off the left side was Zion Guerra. Third running back to carry the ball this evening for Creighton Durham Hall. That's the first carry for Guerra. And they'll give him a gain of a yard to the 50-yard line. It'll be third down and eight. Three and a half minutes into the first quarter. Two wide receivers to the right. And a shotgun for the first time today for the junior Callahan. Danny out of the shotgun. Two-step drop. He's pressured. He'll throw it out into the flat. He has his man Newton across the 40-yard line. Makes a move inside to the 30, across the 25, and all the way down inside of the 20-yard line. 31 yards. It's Callahan to Jalen Newton. 31 yarder as pressured was Callahan he got the ball into the flat and let the playmaker Newton do the rest another first down for the Raiders inside of the 20 yard line the Raiders for the first time today inside of the red zone back to the eye formation and a heavy set with two tight ends and a fullback in front of check first and 10 from the 19 Callahan hands off check and he gets a good push across the 15 yard line and brings it just across the 15-yard line, a gain of five yards for the senior Anthony Check. Good opening drive for Creighton Durham Hall. A couple of third and short conversions. And then a big play, Callahan to Newton, 31 yards. Newton splits out wide to the right. It'll be second down and about five yards to go. Check again gets it. He's met in the backfield, and he's upended. 
right there at the 15 yard line no gain on the play good bit of interior Check defensive lineman on play line. Matt Herron on the, on the carry and White third was in there as well five. for the Eagles third down and five upcoming for Creighton Durham Hall on this opening drive clear skies not a cloud in the sky over St. Paul 70 degree weather for this football opener and junior cornerback Danny Callahan has the Raiders on the move inside of the red zone but met with their fourth chance at a third down Callahan under center check behind him Callahan takes the snap he hands off check makes a move across the 15 falls forward across the 10 yard line should be enough for a first down it is close a gain of five yards for check and they'll mark it right on the 10 yard line it's going to be fourth down about fourth and a half foot they'll call it fourth down and one and first gut check time decision time for second year head coach Brooks Bollinger he'll keep the offense on the field as Callahan runs the play in with 617 on the first quarter clock this drive approaching six minutes and now timeout taken and this one was taken Time by out, Brooks Bollinger he wants to talk about this fourth down play call with 610 on the first quarter clock you're listening to Raider football it's Creighton Durham Hall it's Totino Grace no score and fourth and one coming your way on the oh, other okay. side of this timeout whether you're buying, selling, or simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock, who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion. Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul. Another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Big play in the first quarter of a big game as we welcome you back into St. Paul. Matt Nelson back with you. First quarter action, no score. Totino Grace and the Eagles going on the road as the Raiders play host to last season's defending Class 6A state champions. It's fourth and a short one from the 10-yard line. And the Raiders are going to go for it. Brooks Bollinger is going to roll the dice early. Fourth and short. Check is the running back with a full back in front of him. Two tight ends and Newton the wide receiver. Callahan goes under the center. He has it. Turns. Hands off for Check. He goes across the 10-yard line and has enough again for the first down. Three times on this drive. Check has picked up just enough for the first down. The Raiders convert on fourth down and it'll be first and goal for the Raider offense. They'll mark the ball at the eight yard line as Check picks up two yards on fourth down. And they're gonna bring this in and measure it. From that spot, he definitely has enough for the first down, but they'll bring the chain gain in for the first time today. I mentioned busy night for football. We've got Creighton Durham Hall hosting Totino Grace here in St. Paul across the river. The Gophers at home against Buffalo and the Bulls. It is a first down by more than the length of a football. So our suspicions are confirmed as Check moves the chains for the Raiders. First and goal. And over at U.S. Bank Stadium, the Vikings wrapping up their preseason schedule against the Miami Dolphins. No regulars will see the field in that one. They'll open it up on Monday night, and they'll host the New Orleans Saints. First and goal. The ball is at the eight-yard line. Now three running backs behind Callahan. Newton stays in at wide receiver. Callahan, he'll hand it off for Check. Check is met in the backfield, and he's going to be dragged down right there. As it was Matthew Pentagon, the big guy in the middle, making the tackle for the Eagles. No gain on first down for Creighton Durham Hall. They'll run Underwood, a new running back out there as this drive has eclipsed six minutes and 20 seconds of game clock. Very impressive drive for the junior Callahan being put to the test here. Mooney is the tight end to the left, Prince to the right, and an offset eye formation behind Callahan. He'll move Newton slightly. Now play action pass. Callahan well protected. He'll throw, and the pass is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Prince, the tight end, 
but all over him defending was Alex Bergman and Bergman defended the pass well Callahan put it on the money he was well protected he doesn't have the strongest arm but the pass was definitely catchable for Prince short of the end zone but Bergman a nice job defending the junior the senior six footer 170 pounder defensive back played that one sweetly third and goal now ball at the seven yard line Raiders picked up a fourth down conversion to get inside the 10. Now they're faced with a third and goal from the 8. Callahan drops back. He looks far side. Puts it up in the pass. Nearly intercepted as it's swatted away. Lucas Lee made the nice play defensively. Check that. It was Isaac Richards defending. And Newton couldn't come up with it. So field goal time for Creighton Durham Hall. With 5.14 left in the first quarter. Louis Rachakab out to, to kick what will be a 25-yard field goal from the left hash. Rachakab ready. The snap is good. The hold is down. The kick, sidewinding kick, splits the uprights in half, and the Raiders score first. As Ranchikov makes the 25-yarder and the Raiders lead it. 3-0, first quarter, 5-10 left. And the Raiders draw first blood from St. Paul. You're listening to Raider Football on tjsportsonline.net. Whether you're buying, selling, or simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock. Who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation? Call 612 616 7569 or email Ray Hitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with the champion, Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Happy to support Creighton Durham Hall football is the Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul. For over 35 years, the attorneys at Hitchcock Law Firm have provided legal services to individuals and business clients. Their practice is focused in the areas of estate planning, probate and trust administration, real estate law, business law, general litigation, and sports law. Their approach focuses on each client's background, needs, and goals. For more details, visit their website, HitchcockFirm.com, or call 651-772-3401. The Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul, proud supporters of Raider football here on tjsportsonline.net. Just about a squib kick for the Raiders as we bring you back to St. Paul. Creighton Durham Hall on top. It was a hybrid onside kick. High bounding kick, but Isaac Richards came up with it for Totino Grace as we welcome you back in. Richards recovered it at the 36-yard line. So at their own 36-yard line, we'll get our first look at the defending Class 6A champion Eagle offense. Up front, Pressler. Eben Steiner, King, Lefebvre, and Collins from left to right. The quarterback is Peyton Schuler, senior. They do a lot of option. And Schuler will hand off. Sam Hansen gets his first carry. And Hansen shows that he's got some strength as he pushes the pile ahead to the 40-yard line. A gain of three yards, and it'll be second down and seven Number upcoming seven, for the Eagles. Totino Grace out of Fridley, I mentioned. They were the runners-up for 6A in 2014 and 2015. Interesting stat, they beat Eden Prairie last year for the state title. In their last 53 games, Eden Prairie has lost, uh, is 50-3. and three. They've lost three times in their last 53 games, and they've all been at the hands of Totino Grace and the Eagles. So they've had Eden Prairie's number. Dropping back is Schuler. Now he'll keep it, and he's going to be brought down. He's going to be sacked. Raider defense was there and ready. Connor Sigler with the sack as Sigler brings down Schuler for a one-yard loss. Cunningham was in there as well for that good Raider defense. Back to the 39-yard line. And it'll be third down and seven.
3.43 left in the first quarter from St. Paul. Schuler, the cornerback, he'll drop back. And his throw is complete across the 50-yard line. And the ball came out. The ball came out. The Raiders fall on it. The ball did come loose after the pass was hauled in. And let's see. They're going to say first down for Totino Grace. So they're going to say the runner was down. Totino Grace came up with it. It is a first down pass for Peyton Schuler. First down for and Totino Grace moves the chains for the first time there in Raider territory. They'll mark it first and 10 on the 49-yard line. Gain of 10 yards on the reception. Now just a straight eye formation with the tailback Hansen. Schuler will give to Hansen. Oh, he got popped in the backfield. Oh, he was met with a stiff tackle. Charlie Dennis met him. And he smacked him in the backfield. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and ten. Now they'll call it a loss of one. It's second and 11 for Totino Grace. Dennis really smacked Hansen in the backfield. You can hear this nice crowd out here for this big game. Boy, all the way from goal line to goal line. Just about as full as you'll see a high school football game in Minnesota. Inside of the 20s. They're just about fill up to the top on the bleachers. And they're having a quick issue with the clock. And now they'll wind it, and we'll be back to play here. We'll be second down and 11 for Totino Grace. Brayton Durham Hall's defense has surrendered one first down. Now the first carry around the left side going across the 45-yard line and falling ahead to the 44-yard line. That was Carter Jam. Jam's first carry. You'll see some Carter Jam, some Charles Camara, and some Sam Hansen as well running the football. Schuler as well, the quarterback, is mobile and athletic as well. Six yards on the carry, and it'll be third down for the Eagles. Freeton Durham Hall's defense has come out flying all over the field, making big hits. We'll see if they can stand up here on third down. Play action pass. Schuler to the air, and his pass is going to be incomplete. Incomplete pass at the 45-yard the line. Charles Camara couldn't come up with it. It'll be fourth down. Fourth down. And we'll see now from the 44-yard line, fourth and five, what Jeff Ferguson wants to do. Looks like he's running the special teams crew out there for a punt. Zion Guerra has the punt return dirty duties. So Guerra sets up shop. At about the 10-yard line. Peyton Schuler does the punting, quarterback and punting duties. This one end over end, low kick. That takes a bounce at the 20-yard line. It takes a good bounce for Totino Grace, and it will settle. At the 10-yard line, that's where the special team unit will down it. There's a flag on the play down at the 34-yard line. We'll check that flag after the fourth down punt. Would have been a punt of 34 yards for Totino Grace. And this is our first flag of 2017. And it's against Creighton Durham Hall. It'll be first down. Marked off half the distance to the goal. It was a sideline warning. So as the Gunners came running down that sideline, there were players or coaches too close to the sideline. So that penalty assessed half the distance to the... Uh, no, it's just a warning. So no penalty yardage is assessed. My bad. They'll keep it right at the 10-yard line. The first one is just a warning. After that, there's yardage assessed to any sideline issues. So the Raiders leading at 3-0. Come back out onto the field. Good first drive for Callahan and company as they went, went down and got themselves a 25-yard field goal to go up 3-0. From the 10-yard line, it's Callahan under the center. He'll take it and hand off. That's check across the 10-yard line. Made one man miss, stumbled ahead and fell across the 15-yard line. It's Underwood. He takes it out to the 17-yard line. He picks up seven yards. It'll be second and three for the Raiders. 
Underwood, a five foot eight hundred and eighty pound running back. He's just a sophomore. Check more experience, but we're seeing Underwood and Check splitting the tailback duties. Second down and three for the Raiders. Callahan wants to go to the air. He's hit from behind yet again, and the pass is going to be incomplete. They'll say it was a forward pass, but boy, getting on him quick as can be was that Eagle defense. One of the big guys up front buried Callahan, and now he'll be faced with third down deep in his own territory. number 56 who made the hit no 56 on the sheet for the Totino Grace roster but he's a big guy and he made a big hit Callahan will go to the toss far side of the field goes Underwood he goes across the 20 yard line and has enough for a first down he's all the way out to the 26 yard line and a first down for the Raiders again on third down the Raiders pick up nine yards and move the chains with a minute 36 left in the first quarter a Raider first down and if nothing else they flipped a little bit of field position out of the shadow of their own goal line. This drive started on their own 10-yard line. Now from the 26, first and 10 for Callahan. He'll hand it off across the 30-yard line, goes Underwood. He falls forward yet again and gets it out to the 32-yard line. Six-yard gain for Underwood, and the sophomore is running hard. It'll be second down. And four for the Raiders. Three nothing lead. First quarter action. Creighton Durham Hall on top of Totino Grace, the defending state champs. As you would expect, huge crowd joining us tonight in St. Paul. If you couldn't make it out and you're listening along, we thank you for joining us. This time they go to the toss, and a big hit is leveled at the 35-yard line. Zion Guerra gets popped after a gain of three Zion yards, and it'll be third and short third after down. a gain of two yards. And just 30 seconds left That's here in the first Jordan. quarter. So we've seen Underwood, Guerra, and Anthony Check carrying the ball for the Raiders. Now Callahan has been very good on third down. He faces a third and a long one from his own 34-yard line. Call it the 35-yard line, just shy of the 35. Newton, the wide receiver. Raiders have been good on third and fourth and short. Callahan hands off, and they've got another first down. It's Zion Guerra. He carries ahead to the 39-yard line. That's a four-yard gain and more than enough for another Creighton Durham Hall. First down. This drive started on their own 10-yard line, and it's going to wind us down to the end of the first quarter. Good first quarter of football, especially if you're a Raider fan. They take a 3-0 lead into the second quarter. We've played 12 minutes in St. Paul, and you're listening to Creighton Durham Hall, Raider football, and TJ Sports Online.net. Whether you're buying, selling, or simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock, who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion. Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Happy to support Creighton Durham Hall football is the Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul. For over 35 years, the attorneys at Hitchcock Law Firm have provided legal services to individuals and business clients. Their practice is focused in the areas of estate planning, probate and trust administration, real estate law, business law, general litigation, and sports law. Their approach focuses on each client's background, needs, and goals. For more details, visit their website, HitchcockFirm.com. And with that, we welcome you back in. It's the start of the second quarter here at the University of St. Thomas, and it's O'Shaughnessy Stadium, the home of Raider football. Matt Nelson alongside of engineer Glenn Thompson. Good story for you. We spent the better part of our pregame, rather than prepping for tonight's show, cutting a pigeon loose from the netting up here, high above the 50-yard line at O'Shaughnessy. No gain on first down for Zion Guerra. It'll be second down and 10. So we decided, Mike Gallagher, who did these games with us for two full seasons, 
He has since moved down to Tennessee. He does a lot of stuff with uh, Eastern Tennessee State and the Minnesota Twins and their minor league stuff on radio. So we decided that that pigeon, who was not a smart pigeon, he kept getting stuck, and then we'd get him loose, then he'd get stuck again, then he'd get stuck under the wood, then he'd get stuck in the netting. That pigeon was Mike Gallagher in one way or another visiting us here. At uh, Yes, he, he did have a lot of the behaviors of Mike. Oh, play action. Callahan's going to put it up, and that pass is going to be intercepted, and a flag is down on a play. Callahan was looking for Newton. It was intercepted by Suggs at the 30-yard line, but hold on. This could be pass interference. Newton was double covered. The pass intercepted by Suggs, but let's check this penalty. Raiders take a shot early here in the second quarter, and it is pass interference against the Eagles. The Raiders will get the ball back. And a first down to boot. 15 yards and a first down for Creighton Durham Hall on the pass interference call. And Callahan gets away with a, a deep shot that wasn't a well-thrown ball, but he got the pass interference call. So it'll be first down for Creighton Durham Hall. Yeah, so this pigeon, it was a real, I mean, we had sticks, we had scissors, we had help. We, and eventually, after all that, we got the public address announcer for, from downstairs to come up. He looked at us like we were a couple of real uh, uh, nincompoops. How's that? Real rookies. And he just grabbed this pigeon with his two hands and literally threw it out into the air over the field, and it flew off, uh, almost like releasing a pigeon for the start of the 17th season. Maybe if we win state this year. We'll have to do that every year. <laughs> a carry on first down and a short gainer for the Raiders. Zion Guerra on the carry for three yes, yards. the scissors were going to be used to cut the pigeon free, not to put it out of its misery. Uh, Glenn Thompson wanted me to be very explicitly clear about that as Underwood picks up a short gain. But I'm saying we had all kinds of tools at our disposal to release Mike the Pigeon back out into the wilderness where assuredly some other predator will, will show him his demise. Second down and seven yards. Newton right to left in motion and a handoff. This is Guerra. Guerra falls forward across the 45-yard line. He's to the 43. And they're going to say no gain. Just back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and eight with 10-22 left here in the third quarter and a 3-0 lead for Creighton Durham Hall. It'll be third down and eight yards. Callahan rolls to his left, picks up a great block, puts it up down the field, and this one is going to be intercepted. It sugs with the interception at the 18-yard line. It'll be Totino Grace football and a first down on third down. Callahan goes to the air and sugs for the second time on this drive, intercepts Callahan. This time, however, it holds up. No flag for pass interference, and Totino Grace will take it over on their own 18-yard line. Callahan throwing into triple coverage. And the Eagles force the turnover on third down, and they'll go to work from the 18-yard line. Pete and Schuler, their quarterback. First down and 10. And he'll hand off, and this is going to be a loss of yardage all the way back to the 16-yard line. A loss Carter of two Jam on carry. first down as Carter Jam gets the first carry of this drive for Totino Carter Grace. Dennis again in the backfield. Charlie Dennis. Down. He might not be the biggest guy, but he can come up and he can lay a lick on you, and you saw it there. Second down and 13 now. Upcoming. The preseason top 10, the Metro top 10. Totino Grace clocks in at number three, and then you've got Creighton Durham Hall at number four. So you've got three versus four in the Metro here, opening up the 2017 season. So far, Creighton Durham Hall a 3 nothing lead. Going to the air is Schuler near side, and he has his man in a first down. That's Suggs. Suggs reels it in at the 41-yard line as he gets the better of James Williams. And Suggs has the first down. A gain of 24 yards as Schuler goes to the air and finds Ryan Suggs. Last season, Suggs just one catch for 40 yards. He matches that total here tonight. 
at least in receptions. So first and 10 from the Eagles 41 yard line. Biggest play of the day for Totino Grace. And Schuler will go back to the ground game. He'll flip it out for Jam, and Jam carries it strongly ahead on the toss to the 45-yard line. Again, a four yards for the Eagles. It'll be second down. Tackled by Mateo Marcio. Marcio on the tackle. Mateo's first tackle of the night. It's a good offensive line for Totino Grace. Pressler, Evan Steiner, King, Lefebvre, and the right tackle, Zach Collins. Last season, that state tournament title, their 10th. Biggest play of the night has come on this drive for Totino Grace as they hustle up to the line of scrimmage. Second and six from the 45-yard line. They'll toss for Hansen. Hansen across the 45, and he's wrapped up by a trio of Raiders at the 48-yard line, a gain of three yards for Hansen. It'll be third down and three for Totino Grace. Game three, third down and three. So third down and three upcoming with 7.26 on the game clock here in the second quarter. Just seven and a half minutes left in the first half. So far, so good for the Raiders. Play action pass. Schuler rows it to his right, and the pass is incomplete. Charles Kamara, the intended the target, third, pass is incomplete. Kamara. It's fourth down, and Totino Grace will be forced to punt. Fourth down. Zion Guerra goes back to retrieve this punt. Schuler's first one was a good one of 34 yards. That rested at the 10-yard line. And he'll punt this one from his own 47. Schuler gets it away. This one angled towards the far side of the field. Takes a bounce at the 30-yard line and a good one for Totino Grace. Oh, and it even stayed in bounds. Made it all the way down to the 10-yard line. A punt of 42 yards, if my math is correct. Yards. It is. 42-yard kick for Ray all the way down to the 10-yard line. And again, Crete Durham Hall will have to go 90 yards if they want to score their first touchdown of 2017. So far tonight, the biggest play of the night for the Raiders, a 31-yard reception by Jalen Newton. That's public school arithmetic. That's new math. Common core math, isn't that what uh, it's called now? New math. Well, it's simple addition and subtraction, Glenn. Math was still new when you were in school. That's for that, that one thing is for certain. Callahan to the air. Here he goes out into the flat. Has his man at the 15-yard line. And nicely done. Falling ahead to the 13-yard line. That pass is complete to Stephon Johnson. Steven, Stephon Johnson on the carry. Johnson Game has three, his first seven, catch. Seven. It's a gain of three yards. It'll be second down and seven to go for Creighton Durham Hall here on a... To say picturesque night for football may be the understatement of the century. It is absolutely gorgeous out. Clear 70-degree skies and maybe just an inch of breeze heading from south to north. That's right to left across your computer screens as you watch along here from St. Paul. Glad you could join us tonight for the Raiders. First home game of 2017 in this second season for Coach Brooks Bollinger. Here's Underwood. He's got some space on the left side. He goes across the 50. Now to the 20. His own 30. Cuts back across the 35-yard line and falls ahead across the 40-yard line all the way to the 40. Underwood has a first down and a 27-yard carry for the sophomore Underwood. Big gainer for the sophomore tailback. And the Raiders have a first down. Underwood had space. You could see it right from the get-go to that left side, and he just let his speed take over. 27 yards on the carry for Underwood. Anthony Check, Underwood, and Guerra, a three-headed monster on the ground tonight for Creighton-Durham Hall. 5.46 left in the first half. This a toss. 
And this is carried by Anthony Check. He got it across the 45-yard line. And he carries Eagles across the 50-yard line all the way to the 48. A dozen yards for Check and another Raider first down as they move the ball into Totino Grace territory. And a roar from the crowd for another Raider first down in St. Paul. Callahan has worked primarily from under center. He'll do so on first down and 10 from the Eagle 48. He drops back to pass. He's well protected. Has Newton at the 45. Pass complete. Newton powering his way ahead to the 40-yard line, and that's where they'll mark his forward progress as the pass is complete to the 40-yard line. That's a gain of eight yards. It'll be second and two. Pass complete to Jalen Newton. Eight yards on the play, second and two. So far, it's pretty clear that if Callahan goes to the air, it's either going to be the tight end Prince or the wide receiver Newton, 10 or 18, at least so far. But we'll see what tricks Brooks Bollinger has in his toolbox as this game makes, uh, makes its way along. Here's a running play. Guerra, oh, he's brought down in the backfield. Guerra was wrapped up and brought to the ground by Joey Linders. And he lost a yard. It'll be third down. Linders, good-looking linebacker, 215-pounder, 5'10", senior. And Guerra is a shifty, small running back. Linders was able to wrap him up with two, both arms. Third down from the 43-yard line. Third and five, we'll call it. Callahan on third down. He'll toss it for Guerra. He brings it to the near side, to the 40. And he's going to be awfully close to the first down marker as he dives out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 38. And that's a first down for the Raiders. He needed five, and he got five. First down, Raiders! And you hear the crowd going crazy. This game right now, and these drives have been determined by inches. It seems every time Creighton Durham Hall needs three, they get three. If they need four, they get four. If they need one, they get one and a half. That offensive line has been getting just enough push on the Eagles to move the chains. It's first down and 10 from the Eagle 38-yard line. 3.56 left in the second quarter, and Raiders on the move. Callahan hands off. That's Guerra, and Guerra picks up a couple of yards before he's met by the Eagles defenders. They'll mark it at the 36. Again, of two yards for Guerra on first down. Second and eight, tackled by... It'll be second and eight upcoming. Jake Park and a host of other tacklers. Jake Park on the tackle. Creighton Durham Hall 23 times to the state tournament. Their last appearance in 2011. And two-time state champions 1999 when a guy named Joe Maurer was playing here in 2009 as well. The state titles for Creighton Durham Hall. Second and eight. And again, it's Guerra, this time off the left side, and he stumbled over one of his own linemen across the 35-yard line. Guerra picks up a yard and sets up third and seven. Gain of two on the play. So we've had a little bit of everything here today. <laughs> Pigeons stuck in nets. Some great drives from Creighton Durham Hall. A lot of people, I read Jace Fredericks call him in the Pioneer Press. He thinks this could be a big year for Creighton Durham Hall, that they might take that next step, that they have the talent and the confidence to get back to the state football tourney. And I interviewed Jace. He's downstairs with the Pioneer Press, and you'll hear from him at halftime here on our Raider Halftime Show. Toss outside. Check. He goes to the 35. Got popped as he went across the 35-yard line. Got it down to the 27-yard line. And again, just by a hair, another first down. Eight yards for check. And a Raider first down. The crowd getting pumped up. This another drive that started on the Raiders' own 10-yard line. 2.30 left in this second quarter. It's been a quick first half of football. Lots of ground attack for both team, Both teams. Udoy Bach spells Newton at wide receiver. He splits out wide to the left. First and 10 from the Eagle 27-yard line. Callahan will put it up for Udoy Bach. Far side, and he got him. No, incomplete. Incomplete. 
the officials came running in. I thought Udoibach had reeled in a touchdown pass, but they're going to say it was incomplete. Second and ten broken up by... Boy, from our angle, it looked like he had come up with that pass. It was a good one from Callahan. But instead, the pass was incomplete. It'll be second and ten. Udoibach stays in at wide receiver. Second and ten from the Eagles, 27. Callahan hands it off for a check. He's bent in the backfield. Bumps off one tackle, and that's as far as he's going to go. It's going to be a loss of three as check is pushed back to the 30-yard line. In there on the tackle is Isaac Richards. Very active defensively for the Eagles. Now just 96 seconds left in this first half. Third down and 13 for the Raiders. Could be the part of the field where this is four down territory for Brooks Bollinger and his quarterback Danny Callahan, but third down will probably dictate that. It's third down and 13 from the Eagles' 30-yard line. Here we go. Raiders have been good on third down all game long. Callahan has it. He'll hand it off. Making a move is Underwood. He splits the middle of the field and... Gets the ball ahead to the 20-yard line. He picks up 10 yards. The Raiders needed 13. Probably, again, a situation where they're going to think about going for this with 48 seconds left in the first half. And it'll be fourth, fourth down and three yards to go. Raiders have two timeouts left. Totino Grace has their full complement of timeouts. And now it looks like we are going to have a timeout taken. Timeout is called by Totino Grace this time. So now both teams with two timeouts remaining. Let's step aside. 37 seconds left in the first half. Totino, uh, Creighton Durham Hall on top of Totino Grace. 3 nothing. your score. You're listening to Raider Football. Hello, I'm Sam Wishin for TJ Broncan Services. For live events from the University of Minnesota, Augsburg College, St. Catherine University, Creighton Durham Hall, Hill Murray and Stillwater, look up TJ Broncan Services at tjsportsonline.net. You can also find us on Twitter at TJ Sports Online. On Facebook, go to TJ Broadcast Services. From the East Metro to the MIAC to the Big Ten, the best live coverage on the net is tjsportsonline.net. All right, let's bring you back in to O'Shaughnessy Stadium and the campus of the University of St. Thomas. It's fourth down and Brooks Bollinger has had a chance to talk things over with his offense after Jeff Ferguson used his first time out of this first half. 3 nothing score and a half moon hanging over the end zone. Going from left to right. That beautiful view of the moon looking down on this football opener. Signaling the return of fall. And the crispness in the air. Fourth down and four from the 20. Here we go. Callahan in the shotgun. It's fourth down. Callahan looks. He flips to the far side of the field. And that pass is going to be incomplete. Pass was swatted down by the Eagle defense. Totino Grace swats the fourth down pass out of the air for Callahan. And it's a turnover on downs for Creighton Durham Hall. With 33 seconds to go, Totino Grace will take it over on their own 20-yard line. And we'll see just how aggressive they want to be here. They do have two timeouts. They will get the football to start the third quarter after halftime. So we'll see just how aggressive they want to be here in the concluding moments of this second quarter. Jeff Ferguson. They are going to run it. Kamara carries ahead to the 25-yard line. And the ball came loose. The ball came loose, and they're going to say Creed Durham Hall has it. Oh, a costly mistake late in the first half as Charles Camara fumbles, and the Raiders recover. Oh, that is worst-case scenario for Totino Grace. And the Raiders recover it, and the offense will get another chance at this thing with 26 seconds left in the second quarter. That is absolute worst-case scenario for Totino Grace. Nightmarish. 
scenario. They get the ball at the beginning of the third quarter. Instead, they opt to run it. With Camara. And he fumbles. So the Raiders take over on the Eagles' 24-yard line. Callahan in the shotgun. A chance to pick up some cheap points right before the half. Callahan drops back. He puts it up. End zone. Has a man open. Prince reels it in, but he's out of bounds. His tight end, Prince, was open. It looked like Callahan's throw led him a little too tightly to the sideline. He was there, and he was open. And Callahan just missed him by a few feet. Airing towards the sideline. Didn't give Prince a chance to get both uh, one of his feet down and make the catch. 19 seconds left in the first half after the fumble by Totino Grace. Could have just taken a knee and gone into the half down 3 nothing. Instead decided to run it up the middle. Coughed it up and gave the Raiders another chance at some first half points. Callahan out of the shotgun. He wants to go to the air. He'll do it again. Far side of the field. Puts up a jump. Ball! And it's a touchdown! It's Peter Udoimak from Callahan. 23 yards, and the Raiders lead 9-0. Udoimak went way above two defenders and reeled in a touchdown. With 11 seconds to go, you Doibach from Callahan, 23 yards, the jump ball, the extra point is good. And Creighton Durham Hall, remarkably, after turning the ball over on downs, forces a Totino Grace turnover and throws a touchdown pass. They lead a 10-0. Big game, big moment. This is Raider football. Whether you're buying, selling, or simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified That's realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock, who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion. Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul. Another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Big moment in the second quarter as the fullback, Mara, fumbles for Totino Grace. Raiders recover it, and over two defenders, Callahan finds Udoibach with 11 seconds left. 23-yard touchdown pass, and it has the Raiders up 10-0. They'll kick this one off. It's a low-lining squib kick taken at the 35-yard line, and Totino Grace won't get uh, much more than a yard on the return. It winds five seconds off the clock, and I'd imagine we'd see it. the Eagles come out and take a knee and send this thing to halftime, but I would have thought that as well at the 30-second mark. Reminder at halftime, we're going to catch up with Jace Frederick from the Pioneer Press. He's a great football writer. Great football writer for the Pioneer Press. And we picked some of uh, his thoughts on the 2017 season, some of the teams and players you should look out for. But right now, the talk and of the town the heading into the halftime Durham locker room is Creighton Durham, Durham Hall. They take a 10 nothing lead into the locker room, a most unlikely Take-a-lock late post. touchdown. He's Callahan to Yadoibach, 23 so yards, has the Raiders on top, looking for what would be an upset in, uh, in St. Paul. We'll take our halftime, and when we rejoin you, it's our Raider halftime show, and we'll be joined by Jace Frederick from the Pioneer Press. Whether you're buying, selling, or simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you'll want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock. 
who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation, call 612-616-7569 or email Ray Hitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion, Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Happy to support Creighton Durham Hall football is the Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul. For over 35 years, the attorneys at Hitchcock Law Firm have provided legal services to individuals and business clients. Their practice is focused in the areas of estate planning, probate and trust administration, real estate law, business law, general litigation, and sports law. Their approach focuses on each client's background, needs, and goals. For more details, visit their website, HitchcockFirm.com, or call 651-772-3401. The Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul, proud supporters of Raider football here on tjsportsonline.net. Before we hear from Jace Frederick from the Pioneer Press on his thoughts on the 2017 prep football season, let's keep it right here. The Creed Durham Hall dance team is in the house, and uh, we'll bring you that here on our Raider Halftime Show. everybody. There they go, the Creighton Durham Hall dance team entertaining you here on our Raider Halftime Show. I teased it earlier. Uh, it's a great time to talk all things prep football, not only Creighton Durham Hall football, but so many people are excited about the return of high school sports and particularly uh, football. Jace Frederick writes for the Pioneer Press. He's on their high school football beat. He's an incredibly hardworking beat writer, and tonight he's here at Creighton Durham Hall taking in this top matchup in the state of Minnesota on this opening week one. I caught up with him earlier to get some of his thoughts, and I think it's something you'll all enjoy. Let's uh, get to know Jace and uh, hear some of his hot takes from the Pioneer Press. Durham Hall and Totino Grace. Great week one matchup uh, here at the University of St. Thomas. You're listening to Raider Football. It's our halftime pregame show and we're joined by special guests here. Jace Frederick makes his way around high school football all fall long uh, as he finds the best games of the week and uh, covers them for the Pioneer Press, uh, Press, I should say. Jace, good to see you. Thanks for taking a little time for joining our Raider halftime show. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about this upcoming 2017 season. First of all, where did the summer go? I didn't spend enough time <laughs> at the cabin. I imagine you didn't either, sitting behind that keyboard, uh, uh, firing away article after article. What are you looking out for this year? What are the teams you have your eye on? Well, it's a lot of in 6A. It's a lot of the traditional powers. Uh, it's teams like 
like this Totino Grace team here tonight, they're young, but you got to figure they'll develop like they normally do. Jeff Ferguson has them playing good football always by the end of the year. Uh, Eden Prairie, runner up last year, probably the favorite this year. Like I think Eden Prairie usually heads into the season as the favorite. Uh, others, the traditional powers like Lakeville North is really strong up front and, and in the trenches, and that, that always makes you a good football team. Uh, then you, you've got teams in the North Metro, uh, like Blaine, Champlin Park. They should have offenses that should put them in contention as well. So there are a lot of like heavy hitters in 6A. There are probably like six to eight teams who could win state. It just kind of comes down to who's playing well at the right time, injuries, things like that. How about the vets? Who are some of the superstars that you're keeping your eye on? I know you're plugged into recruiting a bit. Uh, who are some of the names that we should be watching for? Um, you know, you, a lot of times you see, like, it's it's a lot of linemen. I mean, uh, yeah, it's right. really, I mean, like. There's, there's, we are in the heartland after that's all. That's right, that's right. Uh, Lakeville North has a couple. Uh, Rosemount, the name's kind of alluded me with some of these linemen, but uh, Edina's got like an offensive tackle who's six seven and is like a million offers. Uh, 20, and a new head coach over yes, there. That's exactly too. right. So I think it's a lot of times, like, there's a lot of opportunity here for quarterbacks to kind of, and running backs and receivers because a lot of the state stars really laughed last year. You know, a lot of the returners, there's a lot of opportunities for guys to make names for themselves. There, there aren't going to be a lot of guys, you know, heavily recruited skill position players. Mm -hmm. So there's certainly opportunities for other guys to step in. It's not a big star studded name field this year. That's kind of one of the things that you see so I think you'll see names we'll, we'll hear more names by the end of the year than at the beginning but not a lot of stars really for a guy like you though who watches with a pretty educated view of the game and you make your way around the the Twin Cities just yeah. because it's not a star studded uh, class with flashy wide receivers or running backs doesn't mean that there's not a heck of a lot of good players in, in playing right now in the Twin Cities who are going to make an impact in college football whether it be D3 D2 or D1 Right, exactly, and and that, that's kind of the thing you know. See, you see a lot of Minnesota players like this. That I mean, guys who are going to go Division Two, things like that. Uh, and there are other good players like Woodbury's got a defensive end, David Alston. He's got like 30 offers from Division One. We schools, saw him like last the, year. Yeah, correct. The Wisconsin's uh, and, and like I think Nebraska, those schools like that. So there are a lot of guys who will make impacts uh, in the game, and then a lot of maybe like running backs, receivers, guys like that who go D D two, D three, who are also still great players. Now it's halftime as we're listening to this, but little does the viewer know that we're recording this pregame as we're winding it down towards kickoff. Let's uh, nail you down on a little prediction about how you think this game might go and uh, if you're close at halftime we'll celebrate you as a great great football thinker and if you're way off we'll have a good laugh at your expense uh, how do you think this one's going to shake out I'm trying to think what i put in the paper today i believe i went that's seven, how you know you're writing too much I, I believe i went 17 14 totino grace i think it's going to be a close game i think it's going to be a competitive game you know Creighton has a lot of guys a lot more guys coming back than totino does and i think Creighton is going to be in a similar class with totino this year but I, I just have Totino because, like, you have guys who are from that winning program, that winning tradition, and they're used to winning so many uh, late games close. And, and maybe can Creighton kind of take that jump this year? Can they make that uh, next step? Can they make these plays on special teams that can make the difference in these tight games? Those are things that we'll see tonight. But usually, like, if it's close, you give the edge to the team that maybe has done it and proven themselves a little bit more often. So that's why I had the edge go to, going to Totino. But I really think it's going to be like a final possession type game. we got to give you a chance for some of our listeners and our viewers. They might not have ever seen your stuff. For some of them, it might be very familiar a chance to shamelessly plug your material that you uh, churn out for the pie press over there. Well, you can catch any of it on, I tweet almost all of it out, at Jace Frederick on Twitter, otherwise uh, in the Pioneer Press in the paper, TwinCities.com, High School Sports tab. It's, it's constantly churning out a lot of stuff throughout the year, throughout the season. It should be a fun one, so we should hopefully have some content that people will be interested in. Jace Frederick, Pioneer Press, love your stuff, and uh, good to get caught up. Hard to believe here we are, it's football season. I know, I can't believe it either. This came way too fast, but I'm excited. There he goes, Jace Frederick. Follow him on Twitter, at Jace Frederick. You have to if you're a high school football fan. He keeps you up to date with all the goings on in high school sports and in prep football. He's a machine, uh, and I know this game's being covered as well by the Star Tribune, but Jace Frederick, great guy. Good to get caught up with him and writes great stuff for high school football. He's done a lot of work recently as well, featuring and highlighting Brooks Bollinger and uh, Creighton Durham Hall and uh, their efforts in the coach's second season. It's halftime in St. Paul at O'Shaughnessy Stadium, the home of Creighton Durham Hall football. First game on this new field turf and a great first half, a surprising late touchdown. Callahan to Udoy Bach has the Raiders up 10 0. It's halftime, and uh, we hope you're enjoying this presentation. It's brought to you by the Hitchcock Law Firm, as well as Hitchcock Real Estate, and all of our sponsors as well of Creighton Durham Hall Athletics. I mentioned earlier that Metro Top 10, uh, as it clocked in in the preseason, Ian Prairie, number one, Lakeville, number two, Totino Grace, number three. Right now they're down to 10 nothing to the number four team, Creighton Durham Hall. Blaine at five, Maple Grove six, Edina seven, Minnetonka and the Skippers eight. The Irish from Rosemount, ninth, and Prior Lake, 10th. Uh, Other teams that got votes uh, 
by class, uh, or top teams by class in 5A, Elk River and Robbinsville Cooper, 4A, Benilde St. Margaret and Holy Angels, 3A, St. Croix Lutheran, and in 2A, Minneapolis North. They had another great season last year. It's halftime, 10 0 lead, Creighton Durham Hall on top. Keep it tuned right here. It's going to be an exciting uh, second half from O'Shaughnessy Stadium, the home of Raider football, and you're listening to Creighton Durham Hall Sports on TJ Sports Online. Dot net. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock, who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion, Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Happy to support Creighton Durham Hall football is the Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul. For over 35 years, the attorneys at Hitchcock Law Firm have provided legal services to individuals and business clients. Their practice is focused in the areas of estate planning, probate and trust administration, real estate law, business law, general litigation, and sports law. Their approach focuses on each client's background, needs, and goals. For more details, visit their website, HitchcockFirm.com, or call 651-772-3401. The Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul, proud supporters of Raider football here on tjsportsonline.net. Hello, I'm Tam Wilson for TJ Broadcast Services. For live events from the University of Minnesota, Augsburg College, St. Catherine University, Creighton Durham Hall, Hill Murray and Stillwater, look up TJ Broadcast Services at tjsportsonline.net. You can also find us on Twitter at TJ Sports Online. On Facebook, go to TJ Broadcast Services. From the East Metro to the MIAC to the Big Ten, the best live coverage on the net is tjsportsonline.net. Whether you're buying, selling, or simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion, Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Happy to support Creighton Durham Hall football is the Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul. For over 35 years, the attorneys at Hitchcock Law Firm have provided legal services to individuals and business clients. Their practice is focused in the areas of estate planning, probate and trust administration, real estate law, business law, general litigation, and sports law. Their approach focuses on each client's background, needs, and goals. For more details, visit their website, HitchcockFirm.com, or call 651-772-3401. The Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul, proud supporters of Raider football here on tjsportsonline.net. Hello, I'm Tam Wilson for TJ Broadcast Services. For live events from the University of Minnesota, Augsburg College, St. Catherine University, Creighton Durham Hall, Hill Marie and Stillwater, look up TJ Broadcast Services at tjsportsonline.net. You can also find us on Twitter at TJ Sports Online. On Facebook, go to TJ Broadcast Services. From the East Metro to the MIAC to the Big Ten, the best live coverage on the net is tjsportsonline.net. It's halftime in St. Paul. Creighton Durham Hall leading Totino Grace 10-0. We welcome you back into the Raider Halftime Show. I'm Matt Nelson, joined by engineer Glenn Thompson. Checking the other football scores around town, I mentioned... It's a busy day in sports here. We've got the Twins played earlier on today. They won 5-4. to four. They walked off. Max Kepler got hit by a pitch, and they won 5-4. They beat the Chicago White Sox. The Gophers had their season opener at TCF Bank Stadium. They are up 14-7 late in the third quarter. That's a little close for comfort. They were 25-point favorites in that game. And then at U.S. Bank Stadium, uh, they're wrapping up the preseason 
And right now the Miami Dolphins just went up 23-6 to over the Vikings with 12 seconds left in the first half. But good news is Creighton Durham Hall on top, 10 nothing. Close game at TCF Bank Stadium. Vikings look like, uh, barring a big comeback, they're going to lose their fourth preseason game. But right here, Creighton Durham Hall on top by two scores. Got some announcements for you regarding Creighton Durham Hall at 6 p.m. on uh, September 27th. Please join us for the Women, Wine, and Wardrobe at Durham Hall event at uh, the Town and Country Club. You can register for both events online at Creighton Durham Hall's advancement page. And on Friday, September 29th, the Raiders will play Eastridge for homecoming. Creighton Durham Hall invites all future Raiders to attend the game for free. Free admission and giveaways will be available for all current 8th grade students through the admissions office at Creighton Durham Hall. For questions or details, contact admissions director Tony Leesman. Photos, I will not be here for that one. And neither will Glenn Thompson, but TJ Sports Online will be here for that, uh, for that game. We'll have that for you right here as, as well. Photos can be purchased from tonight's game at uh, BrockBeItOnPhotography.com or through following the link at, on the Creighton Durham Hall Athletic website under Resources and Photo Information. Enter in CDH1718 to access the galleries from this year's sporting events. That's pretty cool. You can pick up your photos of the game right there on uh, Creighton Durham Hall's uh, website. Come to the boys' and girls' varsity soccer game starting at 5 p.m. on September 26th to celebrate homecoming week with food served by the Purple People Feeder food truck. That'll be a lot of fun. And then uh, the service committee of the student council, they'll have their first homecoming coat drive in September as well. Mark your calendars, the new Creighton Durham Hall gala, uh, gala on Saturday, October 28th. It's halftime. Let's step aside. You're listening to Raider football. Creighton Durham Hall 10, Totino Grace 0 from St. Paul. Realty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion, Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on TJSportsOnline.net. Happy to support Creighton Durham Hall football is the Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul. For over 35 years, the attorneys at Hitchcock Law Firm have provided legal services to individuals and business clients. Their practice is focused in the areas of estate planning, probate and trust administration, real estate law, business law, general litigation, and sports law. Their approach focuses on each client's background, needs, and goals. For more details, visit their website, HitchcockFirm.com, or call 651-772-3401. The Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul, proud supporters of Raider football here on tjsportsonline.net. Hello, I'm Sam Wilson for TJ Broadcast Services. For live events from the University of Minnesota, Augsburg College, St. Catherine University, Creighton Durham Hall, Hill Marie and Stillwater, look up TJ Broadcast Services at tjsportsonline.net. You can also find us on Twitter at TJ Sports Online. On Facebook, go to TJ Broadcast Services. From the East Metro to the MIAC to the Big Ten, the best live coverage on the net is tjsportsonline.net. (laughs) 
And we welcome you back into St. Paul in O'Shaughnessy Stadium here on the campus of the University of St. Thomas. Matt Nelson back with you. The Raiders will kick it off to open the second half, leading 10 nothing. a good place to be, and a costly mistake late in the first half by Jeff Ferguson's team as they coughed up a fumble on their own 24-yard line with 33 seconds to go, and it was Callahan to the air, 23 yards to Udoibach to put the Raiders ahead 10-0 back in the first quarter. It was Louis Rachakob with a 25-yard field goal. That gave Creighton Durham Hall the 3-0 lead. Udoibach's touchdown pass made it 10-0, and that's where we are here in the beginning of this third quarter. Ratchakov does the kicking. Alec Tennis does the punting for the special teams crew. And we are back to work in the third quarter here from St. Paul. And that ball is loose. It's picked up. At the last second, but a return for negative yardage all the way back to the 14-yard line after that ball was collected by Isaac Richards. He had a tough time picking it up. Once he collected it, he couldn't outrun the special teamers for Creighton Durham Hall. It'll be first and 10 for the Eagles on their own 14-yard line. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. I'm Matt Nelson, our engineer tonight is Glenn Thompson. And tonight's broadcast a presentation of Creighton Durham Hall High School and tjsportsonline.net. No on so after muffing the kickoff, the Eagles will go to work on their own 14, trailing 10 nothing, and they didn't have much going offensively in the first half. One long pass to Suggs for, I think it was 22 yards, but that was about it as they rush up to the line of scrimmage. Hansen on play action. Now Schuler to the air. Has his man at the 15-yard line. Busted one tackle loose across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Goes forward progress. A gain of six yards as Schuler goes to the air and has the first completion of the day to Cameron White. First catch for Cameron White. And he picks up seven. It'll be second and three. Cameron White, listed as a tailback. He's a big guy, only five foot seven, but 195 pounds. He is white, and he looks the part. And now a little motion and a little sweep. Totino Grace has some space across the 30-yard line, but a big tackle was made by a diving Raider who was injured on the play. And here comes the training staff. That ball was carried on the end around by Clossing for the Eagles. His first carry. And the Raiders will take a knee as Clawson carries for the first down. Picked up 10 yards, needed three, and the teams will take a knee. It looked like the helmet might have come off in the process of making that tackle on the far side of the field. And so we'll attend to the injured Creighton Durham Hall player. Made a touchdown-saving tackle but was injured in the process. Let's break. You're listening to Raider football. 10-0 lead right now. Creighton Durham Hall on top early third quarter. Simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock, who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion. Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Happy to support Creighton Durham Hall football is the Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul. For over 35 years, the attorneys at Hitchcock Law Firm have provided legal services to individuals and business clients. Their practice is focused in the areas of estate planning, probate and trust administration, real estate law, business law, general litigation, and sports law. Their approach focuses on each client's background, needs, and goals. For more details, visit their website, HitchcockFirm.com, or call 651-772-3401. The Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul, proud supporters of Raider football here on TJSportsOnline.net. 
Whether you're buying, selling, or simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you'll want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock, who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion. Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. 11-21 on the clock here in the third quarter with Creighton Durham Hall on top of Totino Grace, 10-0. And clearly this injury that took place on second down and three after the long carry by Clossing is a bit more serious than maybe at first we might have thought. They're still attending to the injured Raiders player being very careful, but they have expert uh, medical staff here and athletic training staff, and they always take as many precautions as they possibly can. So we're going to lay out here. We're going to step aside and let the pros do their job best and attend to the injured Raider player. When we do get back to the action, and it'll be 11:21 left in the third quarter, a first down for Totino Grace and uh, the Raiders leading 10 to nothing. You're listening to Raider Football. If you're just joining us, it's the third quarter from St. Paul. You're listening and watching along with Creighton Durham Hall Raider football. We've obviously had an injury take place here in the third quarter with Creighton Durham Hall up 10 to nothing. The young man's family has joined him on the field along with the athletic training staff, and they are looking him over. And it is Stefan Johnson, number 40, is the injured player. And I mentioned it earlier, they have trained medical staff here. This is what they do best, and that's why we're just stepping aside right now and letting these professionals do uh, what it is that they do best and make sure that Stefan Johnson, who's made some big, big plays tonight as well, uh, gets the kind of attention that he needs over there on the uh, 32-yard line. So we will step aside, get out of the way, let these guys do what they do best, and uh, Wish the best for Stefan Johnson as well. It's 10 0 Creed and Durham Hall on top in this first game of 2017.
We welcome you uh, back into St. Paul. Obviously, a serious injury has occurred here in this uh, third quarter, and the young man Stefan Johnson, five foot ten, two hundred twenty-five pound linebacker, being attended to by the medical staff, the athletic training staff here at Creighton Durham Hall and at the University of St. Thomas, their crew as well on hand, I'm sure, to assist with uh, Raider football games. Creighton Durham Hall is on top. 10 nothing right now. Obviously, that seems rather inconsequential and meaningless. Uh, right now, the most important thing at hand is the health of Stefan Johnson, the senior linebacker. He was injured on a second down play that saw Zach Clossing pick up a first down. It looked like he dove and made a what might have been a touchdown-saving tackle, but after that, it was very clear initially that he was injured, and he's been down now probably for some 10 minutes or so being looked over by the training staff. I can report that his family has joined him on the sidelines, and uh, again, we'll stand by, we'll get out of their way, and uh, let the training staff here do what it is that they do best. Creighton Durham Hall 10, Totino Grace 0, and you're listening to uh, Raider football right now in a uh, injury delay. We welcome you back into O'Shaughnessy Stadium, the home of Creighton Durham Hall football. Matt Nelson uh, with you tonight on uh, a night that's taken a uh, more serious turn. Obviously, an injury. Stefan Johnson, a senior, 225 pound, 5 foot 10 linebacker. And um, the, Im the medical teams, the athletic training teams are helping him. His family has joined him on the field. 
he came around and uh, made a, a tackle, a diving tackle after a first down run by Zach Clossing just a moment ago. And, and uh, it was clear immediately that he had sustained an injury. As I mentioned, his family has joined him on the field at the 32-yard line. The score right now is Creighton Durham Hall 10, Totino Grace nothing, but really that does not matter at all right now. What matters is the, the well-being of Stefan Johnson, and it looks as though the on-field staffs are going to give way to EMT crews who will be able to uh, help in this matter. So we, again, are uh, going to get out of the way of this. We're going to let the professionals help uh, young Stefan Johnson. Um, and, again, you're watching Creighton Durham Hall Raider football. There's 11:21 left in the uh, third quarter, but right now, Stefan Johnson, the injured linebacker for Creighton Durham Hall, re uh, receiving uh, medical attention after sustaining an injury here in the third quarter. So again, we'll get out of your way. You're listening to uh, Creighton Durham Hall Raider football, and boy, from up here, we wish the absolute best for Stefan Johnson. I know I speak for everybody up here in the booth. Uh, this is scary situation for all football fans on both sidelines of taking a knee and. And, again, we will get out of the way and uh, let the professionals help uh, Stefan Johnson, the Raider senior linebacker. You're listening to Creighton Durham Hall, Raider football. Professional EMTs here to assist Stefan Johnson, senior linebacker, and a big round of applause from Totino Grace and Creighton Durham Hall fans and both teams on the field as the EMTs helping out Stefan Johnson. And it is worth noting that we did see a thumbs up to the crowd. And the student section chanting, We love 40. I think we all do right now. Stefan Johnson. Both teams will take to the field. They'll go through their warm-ups. That delay was had to be 15 to 20, 30 minutes or so of delay. Obviously, at first, the athletic trainers and medical staff here 
helping stabilize the situation before the EMTs could come and uh, help Stefan Johnson. So when we do resume play, which it looks like we're going to do quickly with a first down for Totino Grace, I can reset the stage for you. Prior to the injury, Creighton Durham Hall, a 25-yard field goal from Louis Ratchakab. That was in the first quarter, made it 3-0, and then Callahan to the air, 23 yards for Udoibach. 23-yard touchdown pass after a costly late turnover in the first half by Totino Grace. Put Creighton Durham all up by a score of 10-0. They kicked off to start this second half. 40 seconds of game clock have come off the board. And now these young men have to get back to the business at hand and playing football as hard as that may seem to do. Schuler to the air, and his pass was deflected. Nice play defensively by Anthony Sheck, who got in there and broke up the pass from Peyton Schuler. It'll be second down and 10. Anthony Sheck, intended for number 28, Carter Jam. I'm telling second you, folks, that is not an easy thing to do. Get back to playing the speed. Um, and at times, the, the, the absolutely uh, violent nature of football. And you have your teammates sitting within eyesight in an ambulance just beyond the 20-yard line. And you're asked to get right back into playing football. It is a difficult, difficult thing to do. But that's what these young men have been asked to do. And that is what they will do. They get back to playing football. Spinning across the 40-yard line close to the first Carter down Jam marker is Carter Jam. Jam. It'll be third down and short upcoming. For Totino Grace. Our engineer tonight is Glenn Thompson. I'm Matt Nelson, and I'm happy to bring you this first game of 2017 for Green Durham Hall, second season for Brooks Bollinger, head coach of the Raiders. Jeff Ferguson bringing his state champion Eagles of Totino Grace from Fridley into St. Paul tonight. Just past 9 o'clock here in Central Time Zone in Minneapolis. Game got started at 7.30. And 10.30 left here in the third quarter. They'll hand it off, and it's Hansen carrying very close to the first down marker across the 40-yard line. They're going to mark him down at the 41-yard line. He's going to be short of the first down by a yard. It'll be fourth and about a half yard upcoming for Totino Grace. They have not been able to get much rhythm uh, going on offensively. A couple of times they've had to punt. They've turned it over on a fumble. And their longest play of the day, 22 yards. It looks like on fourth down that Jeff Ferguson has a mind that he wants to go for this thing even though he's in his own territory. He will. Fourth and inches. There's con some confusion on the play that's being called in. So Peyton Schuler, the big timeout, quarterback, Totino the Grace. senior, has no choice but to take a timeout. We'll do the same. It'll be fourth down for Totino Grace when we come back. 10-0 lead for the Raiders. Please join us for the Whether you're buying, selling, or simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you'll want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock, who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion, Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Happy to support Creighton Durham Hall. Welcome you back into St. Paul. It is fourth and short on the 41-yard line for Totino Grace. Looks like Jeff Ferguson wants to go for it. He will. They'll give it to the fullback, and he's got enough for a first down. The quarterback at the end of the play came pushing in behind. Got to be careful about that. You can throw a flag uh, for that push from behind Peyton Schuler. We saw that. Uh, sometimes teams get away with it, though. Back in the mid-2000s, you saw USC get away with one. Matt Leinert, the Bush push on their road game against Notre Dame. First down, 10. Brought the fighting Irish fans to their knees with a late push from their Heisman winning trophy quarterback uh, Matt Leinard pushed in their Heisman trophy winning running back Reggie Bush for that late touchdown. And you saw it there as well as Kamara carried it for the first down. First and 10 from the 43. It's Hansen on the toss. He gets it to the 45 and no further than that. A gain of two yards on first down. It'll be second and eight for the Eagles. 
Good night on the defensive side of the ball so far for Creighton Durham Hall. They have made big plays, forced turnovers, had some big hits as well. They'll call it a gain of three yards. It'll be second down and seven for Totino Grace, the defending state champs. Peyton Schuler, their senior quarterback. And he looks the part, 6'1", 180-pounder. He looks taller than that from up here. Second down and seven. And Schuler wants to go to the air. He doesn't see the rush coming, and he's sacked. Oh, he was sacked from behind. Matthew Cunningham on the sack and a loss of a yard. Schuler never saw him coming. That could have been a strip sack. But Cunningham came in free and made the big play. It's third down. It'll be third down and eight for Totino Grace. We've seen big plays from Stefan Johnson, Matthew Cunningham. Charlie Dennis as well has been very active in the backfield on the defensive side of the ball for Creighton Durham Hall. Third down and eight now. Let's see after picking up that fourth down how Totino Grace plays this third down from the 45, their own 45. Schuler will toss it on into the flat for Hans, and he broke one tackle, got it to midfield before he was chased out of bounds at the 49-yard line, Creed Durham Hall's 49-yard line. Three, so a gain of about six yards on the play, and again, it'll be fourth and short. I'd imagine the Eagles again will go for it. Eagles have been held scoreless by Creighton Durham Hall's defense through 29 minutes of football and it looks like they're going to punt picked up one fourth down on this drive Jeff Ferguson rolled the dice once doesn't want to do it again of course Schuler, the quarterback he does the punting Creighton Durham Hall has to be aware of a fake here it's the right part of the field and the right down and distance to do it Guerra receives the punt. And this one is a, uh, nearly a fake, but instead a rugby-style kick, Schuler got roughed up. No flag as he was pressured by Rajiv Red. The kick was a short rugby-style punt that went out of bounds at the 28-yard line, a short kick. A 22-yard punt by Schuler. He wanted the flag, almost like he was goading the Raiders into that flag. Didn't get the call, so it's Raider football first and 10 from their own 28-yard line. And just that quickly, Danny Callahan in this offense is out trying to create some space between them and the Eagles. This some of their best field position they've had all night long, and it's on their own 28-yard line. Look at Guerra go across the 30, and he's brought down at the 34-yard line. And again, it's six yards on first down. It'll be second down and four for the Raiders. I'm impressed with young Zion Guerra, five foot nine sophomore, 155 pounder. So you've got Underwood and Guerra, a pair of really dangerous sophomore running backs with their best football still ahead of them. I don't think there's a question about that. Udoibach and Newton in motion to the bottom of your screen, a pair of good wide receivers. Udoibach, a long touchdown catch earlier tonight, and they'll fake the end around. Instead, they'll run. Guerra up the middle to the 34-yard line. And Guerra might have gotten a yard. It'll be third down. Lots of eyes on this game. Easily the best matchup of week one in the state of Minnesota. Creighton Durham Hall, number four in the Metro preseason. Totino Grace, the defending Class 6A champions after a 20-20 victory over Eden Prairie at U.S. Bank Stadium in last year's 6A state championship game. Finally getting over the hump after coming so close year after year in these past three seasons. A big one for Jeff Ferguson last year against Eden Prairie. Here comes a toss on third down, and Guerra's going to be brought down in the backfield. Totino Grace sniffed that one out a mile away. Ryan Suggs chased down Zion Guerra and forced the loss, tackle for a loss for Suggs. And... Creighton Durham Hall goes three and out. Here comes the punt team. Alec Tennis does the punting. Suggs way back deep to receive it, all the way back to his own 20-yard line. So he likes to come up and get a running start at it. High snap. Tennis goes up and get it and fires a booming punt. Oh, this is a beauty. 
And Suggs will take it at the 26-yard line. Back pedals, got away from one tackle. Now to the 25, back across and picks up five yards on the return before the special teamers chase him down. Jack Anglum caught up with Suggs, brought him down after a turn of five yards to the 30-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for Totino Grace. Back out onto the field, trailing the Raiders by 10. Field goal by Ratja Cobb in the first quarter, 25 yards. And after a fumble by Totino Grace, Callahan 23-yard touchdown pass to Udoibach into double coverage. But Udoibach way over the defense to bring it down. Hansen on the carry, back to the line, a scrimmage, and no more. Matthew Cunningham is there to bring him down. Five minutes and 15 seconds left in this third quarter, and the Raiders up by two scores. Prince and Cunningham in there on the tackle. This Matthew Cunningham, he is a playmaker on defense. He can get after the ball carry. Some of these guys just seem like they're always in there on the tackle. That's Cunningham. Peyton Schuler trying to make something happen offensively for Totino Gray. Second and 10 from the Eagles 30. He'll throw it out into the flat. The pass reeled in, but it's going to be a loss of yards. Great tackle. Weston Thompson. Cameron White on the reception. Tackled by Weston Thompson. Weston Thompson makes the tackle on White, and they'll say that uh, White got back to the line of scrimmage. I had it for a loss. They'll say no gain. It'll be third down and 10. For the Eagles, a couple of times they've tried to get the ball into the flat to Cameron White, and so far he hasn't been able to pick up much with it. First one is about six yards. This one goes for no gain. 4.35 left in the third quarter. And a beautiful night in St. Paul. The kind you dream about on those hot, humid days. Schuler under center. He drops back. It's third and ten. He's pressured. He goes to a screen, and the Raiders sniffed it out. And a big tackle. Luke Brower makes the tackle, and it'll be well short of the sticks. It'll be fourth down for Charles Totino Kamara. Grace. Kamara on the reception. Picks up six yards. Not quite enough, and Schuler will be forced, I think, to punt. I can't imagine that Totino Grace would go for it here. They won't. The big guys are going to the sideline, and the special teamers come out. Guerra will go back to receive the punt. And the Raiders were forced to take a timeout because they had one player slow to get off of the field. And Brooks Bollinger didn't want to lose this field position. A five-yard penalty would have resulted in a Totino Grace first down. It's fourth down. The Raiders take a timeout. And Totino Grace will send the punt team out when we come back trailing. Creighton Durham Hall, 10-0. You're listening to Raider Football from St. Paul. Whether you're buying, selling, or simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you'll want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with the champion, Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Welcome back to O'Shaughnessy Stadium in St. Paul, fourth down. And four yards to go on the Eagles. 36-yard line. Guerra comes in to receive the punt. Schuler, the quarterback, goes back. He does the punting duty. Doesn't have quite the leg that Alec Tennis does, but he has been the beneficiary of some very Eagle-happy rolls. We'll see if he gets another one. This one more of a high, soaring punt that Guerra comes up and muffs. Oh, the ball's loose at the 40-yard line. Who's got it? Guerra muffed that high punt. He came charging up on it. That's always dangerous when you're moving like oh, that and you try to catch a punt. Nine times out of ten, that ball's going on the ground when you see him charging up like that. But fortunately, the Raiders recover the loose ball. And it'll be first down and ten yards to go for the Raiders, leading 10 nothing with 3.30 to go here in the third quarter. I'm Matt Nelson, the voice of Raider football. So happy you can be with us tonight. Hardworking engineer Glenn Thompson to my right. And our thoughts with the injured Stefan Johnson. We had about a 30-minute delay here in the third quarter as the EMTs attended to Johnson. 
And we are sending our best thoughts to him for a speedy and full recovery. Callahan wants to go to the air. He goes down the far sideline, and Udoibach made a great catch. Udoibach falls across the 30 to the 29-yard line. 30 yards, Callahan to Udoibach, and a Raider first down. 31 yards on the play for a Raiders first down. Move those chains, Callahan to the air, and Udoibach has been his favorite target tonight. His size, you put the ball up. And Udoibach is able to go up and make plays for you. Six foot four, hundred and ninety-two pounds. That's a quarterback's best friend, and you saw it there as Udoibach, 31 yards. Now back to the ground we go. It's Underwood. Big gainer up the middle. He picks up nine yards to the 20-yard line. He's close to the first down marker. It'll be second down on the carry for the sophomore Underwood. And just like that, the Raiders are in business. Moving the chains and moving the football into the red zone. And that was all the offensive line on that carry by Underwood. I think I could have even put the old cleats on. I might have been able to get five or six yards on that one. But Underwood bursts through for nine. Second and one with 2.22 left in the third quarter. Raiders on the move. Underwood again spins his way across the 20-yard line, has a first down, down to the 17-yard line. That's a gain of three yards and a Raider first down. Well, Glenn thinks I'm making up stories. I think I could have gotten five yards on that hole. Underwood on the carry for four yards for another Raiders first yeah, down. I think, I think my last elliptical session was good enough that I think I could have picked up five yards. Felt good about my last workout. First and ten. Here we go from the 16. Callahan goes to the air. Near side. And his pass is incomplete. Thrown over the head of Jalen Newton. Inside of two minutes left in the third quarter. And it'll be second down and ten. Boy, with the way the defensive played, if Creed Durham Hall can find a way to pick up these last 16 yards and get the ball in the end zone, I think it would spell trouble right now for the Eagles because... They have, I don't believe they've been in the red zone today. No, just a couple of times they've gone over the 50-yard line. That's been pretty stingy for the Creighton-Durham Hall defense. Callahan will hand this one off and run down in the backfield is Underwood. Good tackle for Totino Grace and Patrick Doran. Underwood on the carry for a, with a loss of two. Loss of two yards, Patrick it's third Doran down and 12. Doran's tackle brings down Underwood. And it'll be third down and a dozen to go from the 18-yard line. And I'm not in the business of uh, predictions, but if I was, I think if you're Callahan here, you're probably looking for Udoibach. He has proven that he can beat a double, triple team and come down with the ball for you. Unless you feel like you can run this and get in field goal range, I think Udoibach number three would have to be your target. Out of the shotgun goes Callahan. He's pressured. He puts it up towards the end zone. Nearly brought down. Udoibach was over there. And the pass was incomplete. Jalen Newton was also over there too. And it looks like Nate Newton is a bit shook up on the play, but he's up. It'll be fourth down and 13. He had his two best receivers little unconventional. Not oftentimes do you see two receivers going to the same spot for that very reason. They attract a couple of defenders. Your two best receivers are always going to draw a crowd, and it just kind of creates a traffic jam on that side of the field. Looks like we're going to try a long field goal here for the Raiders. This one would be 35 yards. Racha Cobb was good from 25 earlier on. This one right smack dab in the middle of the field. 35-yard try. Hold is down. The kick is up. It has the distance. And it is no good. Wide left. Had the distance, but Rachakov misses wide left, so the score will remain. 10-0, Creighton Durham Hall on top. And the Eagles will take it over on their own 25-yard line. You heard the student section going crazy. From our angle, it looked pretty close to good, but it misses wide left. So says the officials. And so a missed field goal by Rachakab. He's one for two today. And 
and he misses that 35 yarder would have been nice to put one another three points on the board but you trust your defense here Schuler has not been able to get this offense in any kind of rhythm against this Crete Durham all defense a minute left in the third quarter and they'll hand it off, bouncing around the 25-yard line to the 30, a first down for Totino Grace, all the way across the 35 to the 38-yard line. Goes Cameron White, the big guy, and he's injured Cameron now. And his Second helmet comes five, off. White five, runs swing. for a first down, a 20-yard carry for White. 18, first and 10 for uh, 18, Grace. I should say. And they'll come over and take a look at Cameron White. And they're looking at his left leg. Cameron White, a senior, 5'7", 195 pounder, and they're taking a look at his left leg. 53 seconds left here. In the third quarter from O'Shaughnessy Stadium, busy night for football, Gophers, Vikings, and Raiders in action. We had the Twins earlier today. The Saints are playing tonight. They have this thing called the State Fair going on that brings just a few people into the Twin Cities as well. Whether you're buying, selling, or simply exploring the possibilities of home ownership, you'll want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with the Dyna Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. That's what you're looking for. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock, skilled at networking, pricing, negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com. Check out his website. Go with a champion, Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul, another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Good to see Cameron White is up after that 18-yard first down scamper. And he's able to get to the sideline on his own power. Totino Grace needs him. He's a good-looking player, that White. He's made a few big plays for them today. Good in the pass game, and that time we saw some of his versatility in the running game as well. From the 38-yard line, here comes Peyton Schuler. His team has been shut out to this point. He'll hand it off and sweeping around to the left for maybe... A yard on the carry goes Zach Clossing. He was dragged down from behind by Luke Brower. Number 11, Zach Clossing on the carry. Tackled by Brower. Two-yard gain on the play. Second down and eight. So second down and eight for Totino Grace. They'll give him a couple of yards on the carry. Clossing. The playmakers on this, this side of the ball for Totino Grace this year are going to be Hanson, Kamara, Jam, White. And you just saw Clossing. Now Schuler to the air. He'll drop back and put it up. His man got behind the defense, and he's going to get a pass interference call. Suggs got the better of James Williams, and Williams had no choice but to grab him and draw the pass interference call. Now, no such thing as a good penalty, but that might be it because that's probably a touchdown if he lets Suggs run free. He was behind Williams. He had beaten him, and Schuler put the ball up there where he could get it. So he grabs the jersey. Coughs up the 15 yards on the penalty. Totino Grace will get the first down, and we'll have one more play here in the third quarter. This is definitely 15 yards and a first down pass interference against Williams. You know, Schuler and Callahan, they're both about the same kind of player. A little bit mobile, not the strongest arms. They really rely on their players running to a spot and throwing to a spot rather than being able to just cram it in there. So 15 yards is marked off to the Raider 45-yard line. One second left in the third quarter with Totino Grace down by 10. Schuler rolls out, made one man miss. It was Matthew. Now he goes across the 40-yard line, and what could have been a disastrous loss is a 9-yard gain as Schuler made Matthew Cunningham miss. And picked up nine yards. Big couple of plays there. And it looks like there's a flag down, though, at the 45-yard line. Schuler on the run. And we'll check it. It's in the area of holding. But let's check this last play of the third quarter. Twelve minutes to go here in St. Paul. Oh, 
Yeah, it is holding against Satino Grace. It'll erase a nine-yard run, a 10-yard penalty, and will replay first down, but we'll play it going the other way. That's the end of the third quarter. You're listening to Creighton Durham Hall Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. I'm Matt. Our engineer tonight is Glenn, and we'll have 12 minutes to play. And I don't believe on an offensive penalty that they play an untimed down here at the end of the third quarter, but it kind of looks like what that's what they're going to do. The no, nope, there it is, quarter. the end of the third quarter. Let's break. Three quarters down, one to go in the opener in 2017. And you're listening to Creighton Durham Hall Raider football. They're going to keep the teams out on the field, I think because of the long delay. So they had that long delay. They'll keep the teams out onto the field. No break in between quarters. And we'll get right back to it. It'll be first down and 22, 22 yards to go. The first down marker awaits at the 35-yard line. Schuler will hand it off. And sweeping around the line and ahead to the 49-yard line. That's Hansen, one of his better runs today. As he picked up about six yards to the 49-yard line. It'll be second down and 16. That's the end of the third quarter. Now they'll call the end of the third quarter. So we did play an untimed down. Now it's the end of the third quarter. They will take that break. And let's hear from our sponsors. You're listening to Creighton Durham Hall Raider football. And uh, come on back. The Raiders up 10-0 over Totino Grace and the Eagles, the defending state champs. Happy to support Creighton Durham Hall football is the Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul. For over 35 years, the attorneys at Hitchcock Law Firm have provided legal services to individuals and business clients. Their practice is focused in the areas of estate planning, probate and trust administration, real estate law, business law, general litigation, and sports law. Their approach focuses on each client's background, needs, and goals. For more details, visit their website, HitchcockFirm.com, or call 651-772-3401. The Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul, proud supporters of Raider football here on tjsportsonline.net. Hello, I'm... First game on this new turf at O'Shaughnessy Stadium as we welcome you back. The Raiders trying to put up a W on the first game on this very nice-looking new turf. I think the old turf had the UST in the middle. This one has the school shield. Schuler rolls, throws, and hooks up near the first down marker. And now... Falling forward across the 35-yard line and picking up a first down is Nate Schultz, the tight end. He picks up 16 yards. Schuler to shoots. Red on the tackle and a first down for the Eagles. That's a big one. It, it negates the holding penalty and moves the sticks for Totino Grace. Schuler barking out instructions to his team. Down by two scores with 11.43 to go in the fourth quarter. Hansen play a no he gets it Hansen back to the line of scrimmage and he picked up a yard Hansen picks up a yard it'll be second down and nine yards to go for the defending state champs in class 6a it really filled up here at O'Shaughnessy for this first game you can hear the student section going crazy looks like a mob scene down there they're having a great time tonight and the chair back seats and the bleachers between the 20s nearly completely full of Raider and Eagles fans. They've had this one circled on their calendars for some time. This was going to be a statement win for whoever can find a way in this one. And you knew it was going to be close. Here we are with the Eagles driving. Second and nine from the Raiders' 32-yard line. And Schuler will hand it off to Hanson. He goes across the 30. Now the 25. He breaks free, and he's going to go all the way into the end zone for an Eagle touchdown. Hanson finally popped one. He had been bottled up all night long. And he goes to the house, 32 yards for Sam Hansen, and we've got ourselves a ball game. Sam Hansen high steps his way into the end zone for a 32-yard touchdown. He broke free of that defense, and there was no looking back. And your score is 10-6. Jack Vettel. Out for the extra point. And this is a big extra point as well. Would allow the Eagles to tie it with a field goal. Now, penalty. 
And the ball had gotten free on the snap. It was a false start false against start Totino, Totino Grace. They'll march it back five yards and retry the extra point. Last season, Totino Grace won the state title, and they said goodbye to 23 seniors. But they have, still have a talented group coming in here. Vettel right now asked to kick this 25-yard extra point after the false start penalty. Vettel has it blocked. It's blocked. The extra point is no good. So the Raiders still have four points of breathing room here with 10.47 to go. That was a disaster on special teams for Totino Grace. A false start and a bad snap and then a blocked extra point. Keeps the Raiders on top by four. You're listening to Creighton Durham Hall Football on tjsportsonline.net. Hello, I'm Sam Wishin for TJ Broadcast Services. For live events from the University of Minnesota, Augsburg College, St. Catherine University, Creighton Durham Hall, Hill Marie and Stillwater, look up TJ Broadcast Services at tjsportsonline.net. You can also find us on Twitter at tjsportsonline. On Facebook, go to TJ Broadcast Services. From the East Metro to the MIAC to the Big Ten, the best live coverage on the net is tjsportsonline.net. Williams and Newton are back for the Raiders. We welcome you back into St. Paul. Right now a 10-6 lead after a 32-yard touchdown run by Sam Hansen. Put Totino Grace on the board for the first time tonight. The extra point by Vettel was blocked. And after a long touchdown pass to Yudoybach and a field goal earlier on by uh, Louis Ratchikob, 25-yarder there. The Raiders find themselves up 10-6, but with a lot of football left to be played here, 10.47 to go. This game could turn on one play. Raiders had a drive that took up more than seven minutes of game clock in the first quarter. They could go for another one of those here with Callahan. Williams and Newton back, and they'll kick to him. It'll be Williams from the seven-yard line. Williams brings it around to the 15, picks up a block, goes to the 15. Stiff arm, got it out to the 19 and scampered across the 20-yard line. And that's where Callahan will set up shop with the offense. Six-foot, 296-pound junior. Really needs a nice long drive down the field here as Creighton Durham Hall tries to find another score here. Get back up by two scores. See if they can find a play through the air or maybe have Check Underwood or Guerra pop one, a long one, a running play. In the papers, in the Metro, Totino Grace ranked number three Metro. Creighton Durham Hall, number four in 6A, the big dogs of, call, of high school football. 10.39 to go. Callahan needs a drive. He'll drop back to pass. Now he scrambles to his right towards the 20-yard line, tucks and runs, and might have picked up a couple yards as he scampered out of bounds and fell towards the 22-yard line. 10.34 to go now. It'll be second down and about eight yards to go for Creighton Durham Hall. Callahan's not going not gonna to kill you with his legs. He can move a little bit. Enough to, be, uh, enough to be dangerous. That's what I say, right, when you don't really know what you're doing, but you know a little bit about it, enough to be dangerous. That, like Glenn and his engineering prowess, enough to be dangerous. Or like me on the microphone, I know, I know enough to be dangerous. That's like Callahan and his, and his legs. Good enough to get you out of trouble every now and again. Play action pass. Callahan falls back, puts it up. There's nobody there. The pass is incomplete that Totino Grace fans want. Intentional grounding, but Prince was there. He just shot it way over his head. They're going to throw a flag. Intentional grounding. Prince is saying, I was there. And the ball literally went right over Prince's head. And they are going to call intentional grounding. Oh, this one's going to sting. This will be a spot of the foul penalty and a loss of down against Callahan. There is a case to be said. I don't think he knew Prince was there, but Prince was in that direction. And this will go all the way back to the five-yard line. 17-yard loss on the play and an intentional grounding penalty. The 
third and long for the Raiders. So now third down and long. What does Brooke Smallinger want to call here? Some kind of a draw, a screen, maybe that pass to Newton that we've seen into the flat. This is dangerous territory. Third down and 25. 30 yard line is the yard to gain for a first down. Callahan has three receivers and he goes under center. Needs to be well protected here. I'd imagine Totino Grace will bring some pressure. They do. And the handoff to Underwood. He picks up a couple of yards. And Creighton Durham Hall will have to punt it out of their own end zone. Underwood on the carry for a yard. Fourth down. Oh, this is where you start to feel that pressure, isn't it? You've led all game long. Your lead is now four. And you're asked to punt it out of the back of your end zone. Now, Creighton Durham Hall does have a big legged kicker, Alec Tennis. He can bomb it. Now Suggs brought back the first kick on the punt return, but Bergman is going to bring this one back. So Tennis just gets it away. Bergman will chase it down, and the ball will roll towards midfield. It's going to be down at the 47-yard line, but there's a flag down in the end zone. Flag on the on and there was the some contact towards Tennis. tennis. Let's check this flag. This could be pivotal. There was contact with Tennis. The flag down in the end zone. Running into the kicker would result in not enough yardage for a first down. Roughing the kicker would be 15 yards in a first down. The officials getting together and talking this one over. We'll see if it's incidental or a personal foul. This is a big call in this game that we're about to hear from these officials. They're really talking this one over. Special teams can determine a close game like this. The forgotten, everyone wants to talk about your offense, your quarterback, your defense. Boy, special teams is important. Let's see this call from our head official. And they're calling the football back. Running into the kicker is the call, the five-yard variety against Totino Grace. Yeah, and they called also holding illegal shift, check that, against Creighton Durham Hall and a sideline warning against uh, Totino Grace. So offsetting penalties. I'm surprised that you'd re-kick this, uh, but that's what we're going to have to do, replay this down. Now this is really dangerous because you've got a penalties fatigued offset. special team, so you have offsetting penalties. You have to re-kick this ball on fourth down. And... Uh, And this is another different return man for Totino Grace. Bergman comes in. And Spevasek goes back. Now they'll flip them. So it will be Bergman going back to receive. Tennis will punt this thing out of the shadow of his goal post. He's right underneath it. On the very back of the end zone, he's got about a step backwards to spare. Tennis steps into it and bombs one. Hit it nicely. Bergman takes it from the 42, and he picks up a couple of yards. That's it. Good job on special teams by Creighton Durham Hall. Now they'll rely on their defense. 9.33 to go, and Creighton Durham Hall up by four. Good football game, as we all knew it would be here week one in St. Paul. First and 10 from the 40. Now down four, Totino Grace has to go 40 yards, but that Creighton Durham Hall defense has been so good all game long, they got gashed by Sam Hansen for a long one of 32 yards, but that's been the only blemish on this unit so far today. Can't afford another one of those. Totino Grace will ground and pound you and wear you down with their running attack. That's what they're known for. Now to the ground and a nice play made in the backfield. The loss of a yard. Dennis on the tackle. And Dennis is in there on the tackle and now flags go flying. We've got all kinds of stuff going on after the snap. Dennis made the tackle on Carter Jam, but after the play, flags went flying. 
see if this is offsetting personal fouls for unsportsmanlike conduct. Or we'll see who's going to get away with it. And it's a personal foul against Creighton Durham Hall. And that one stings. 15 yards and a first down for Totino Grace. Ouch. Can't have that stuff going on against this defending state champion Totino Grace team. They're tough enough without handing out 15-yard penalties. So a great play by Dennis in the backfield is erased. 15 yards is marched off, and Totino Grace has a first down, down by four. They'll have first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Peyton Schuler is their quarterback. He doesn't have quite the arm of that other Peyton you might think of when you think of quarterbacks, but he's a pretty good one, still the same. 9.23 left. Schuler under center. And he'll give for Hansen. Again, through the middle he goes. He's got some space across the 20-yard line. He goes to the 18. That's a gain of seven yards on first down. It'll be second down and three. And look out, Sam Hansen, 423 yards last season and four touchdowns. He's getting it going here. And Totino Grace is working quickly. Creighton Durham Hall couldn't make their switch. That no huddle really got to Creighton Durham Hall there. And Brooks Bollinger forced to take a timeout. Totino Grace is on the move. The Raiders are up four. It's the fourth quarter from St. Paul. Happy to support Creighton Durham Hall football is the Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul. For over 35 years, the attorneys at Hitchcock Law Firm have provided legal services to individuals and business clients. Their practice is focused in the areas of estate planning, probate and trust administration, real estate law, business law, general litigation, and sports law. Their approach focuses on each client's background, needs, and goals. For more details, visit their website, HitchcockFirm.com, or call 651-772-3401. The Hitchcock Law Firm in St. Paul, proud supporters of Raider football here on tjsportsonline.net. Busy night for football in the Twin Cities. Good news to report from TCF Bank Stadium for Gopher fans. Uh, P.J. Flex first game as Gopher head football coach, and the Gophers rode the boat uh, all their way to a 10-point victory over Buffalo 17-7, the final score at uh, TCF Bank Stadium. Next week, Oregon State on the road, and then Middle Tennessee back at home for the Gophers. Right now, though, a more pressing issue at hand is just a four-point lead, and Totino Grace has come to life offensively here in the fourth quarter. Schuler under center. He'll go play action. He'll roll it out to his left. He'll throw. Has his man open in the middle of the field. It's the tight end. Inside of the five-yard line goes shoots, and he is inside of the five. It's a first and goal for Totino Grace. And Schutz picks up the first down. It'll be first and goal from the four. Schuler on play action. Had his tight end wide open in the middle of the field out of that timeout. First and goal for Totino Grace, who is really rounded into form. Hansen gets it. He has a head of steam, makes his way towards the goal line, and is just short. They're going to mark him at the half-yard line. It'll be second and goal for Totino Grace. Green Durham Hall needs their defense to step up and make a stand here. Up four. Hansen got it inside the one. Now it's second and goal inside of the one-yard line. Schuler hands off for Hansen again, and he is going to be dragged down. Oh, what a stand on second down. Hansen dragged down. Back to the line of scrimmage and no more. It sets up a big third and goal from the one-yard line. Totino Grace will send in the heavies. They'll call a few offensive linemen back and send in some fresh legs. Boy, wouldn't a false start be nice here? Se 7.48 to go in the fourth quarter. Creighton Durham Hall up four, and we've got a timeout taken, and this one is going to be taken by Coach Ferguson, I believe, in the Totino Grace sideline. They want to talk about this third down, so we'll step aside. 10-6 your score, Creighton Durham Hall on top, but Totino Grace threatening inside of the one-yard line when we bring you back to St. Paul. Hello, I'm Tom Wigson for TJ Broadcast Services. For live events from the University of Minnesota, Augsburg College, St. Catherine University, Creech and Durham Hall, Hill Marie and Stillwater, look up TJ Broadcast Services at tjsportsonline.net. You can also find us on Twitter at TJ Sports Online. On Facebook, go to TJ Broadcast Services. From the East Metro to the MIAC to the Big Ten, the best live coverage on the net is tjsportsonline.net.
here we go. It's third down and goal to go. For Totino Grace, they're down four. In a big spot after a big tackle. Hansen denied on second down. We'll see what Coach Jeff Ferguson has in store for the Raiders defense here on third down. From the one-yard line, goal to go. Peyton Schuler, senior quarterback, takes the snap. He hands off, and there goes Totino Grace in for the lead. The handoff, Cameron White, who was injured earlier, re-enters the game, gets the carry, and brings it in for a touchdown. Totino Grace leads it 12 to 10. And I thought maybe, just maybe, they might try to go for two here. Totino Grace, they had an extra point blocked earlier. They'll take another swing at it. This is a much better kick. This was bombed right through the uprights, and the Eagles push their lead to three. Totino Grace has scored 13 unanswered points to take a 13-10 lead with 7.42 to go. If the Raiders are going to win this game one, they're going to have to do it in come-from-behind fashion with their junior quarterback. Stay tuned right here to tjsportsonline.net. It's going to be a great finish from St. Paul. During the possibilities of home ownership, you want to work with a professional. That's Ray Hitchcock with Edina Realty in St. Paul. He can provide the most reliable market information and expert advice. Now more than ever, you need to work with a qualified realtor. That's Ray Hitchcock, who is skilled at networking, pricing, and negotiation. Call 612-616-7569 or email rayhitchcock at edinarealty.com or visit his website in real estate. Go with a champion. Ray Hitchcock of Edina Realty in St. Paul. Another proud supporter of Raider football on tjsportsonline.net. Talk to a lot of people about this game as we bring you back into the O'Shaughnessy Stadium at the University of St. Thomas. And I said, who do you like in this game? It's going to be a good one. And I had more than one person, including Jace Frederick from the Pioneer Press that you heard on our halftime show, say this is going to be a last possession one score kind of game and that's exactly what we find ourselves in with 742 to go Matt Nelson with back with you the voice of Green Durham Hall Raider football from O'Shaughnessy high atop of our perch right here on the 50 yard line looking over this great football game two teams that really could make noise late in the season I believe that Vettel puts it on the tee and hits a kick spiraling out of bounds. Good break for Creighton Durham Hall. They're going to get it at the 40-yard line. Jack Vettel kicked it out of bounds, tongued it left. So illegal procedure. First and 10, Creighton Durham Hall at the 35. And we'll get it at the 35. I said the 40, pardon me. Thinking pro football, college football. They mark it at the 35 in high school football. So to the 35-yard line we go. But still, some of the better field position Creed Durham Hall has had all night long to work with. That last drive was really hurt by that intentional grounding penalty. That really kind of put the nail in that drive. Now we got to see if Danny Callahan has one more good drive in him. So impressive in the first half, but we've seen Totino Grace and their resilience come back and score 13 unanswered points. Callahan, first and ten, hands off for Underwood, and he picks up two. Maybe one, and the clock winds. 7.30 left there in the fourth quarter. Tackled by Suggs. The lone touchdown today for Creighton Durham Hall. 23-yard touchdown pass. Callahan to Udoibach after a fumble with 33 seconds left in the first half. By Totino Grace, costly mistake. And that's the only time so far that the Raiders have gotten it across the goal line. Second and nine from the 36. Callahan back to the running game and back to Underwood who spins his way across the 40-yard line and then shows power as he muscles it to the 49-yard line. Close to the first down marker, a gain of eight yards. It'll be third down and one, which the Raiders were so effective at earlier on in this game. Cunningham who plays a lot of defense. He'll come in as another blocker for this play and I would guess that this is probably four down territory barring a penalty or a big loss on third down. Green Durham Hall has been pretty good in third and short situations as that fall chill that you know in Minnesota starts to set in. The temperature is really taking a nosedive here 
as we get close to the 10 o'clock hour in the central time zone here in St. Paul, the capital city. Third and one. Underwood's got the first down. Nice spinning run by Underwood. He goes to the 49-yard line. He needed one. He got five, and it's a Raider first down. First down, Raiders. Looks like Coach Brooks Bollinger really wants to ride the running backs here. Underwood and check. And I'm sure we'll see Guerra oh, as well. Tackle. Tackled by Suggs after the five-yard gain for Totino Grace. Underwood stays in at running back as they'll go with an eye formation behind the junior quarterback Callahan. First and ten from the 49. And they'll hand it off for Underwood. He goes to the left side, has some space. He's across the 45. There he goes to the 40 to the 35, staying in bounds. And they'll mark it at the 35-yard line. That's a gain of 15 yards for Underwood. And a Raider first down. Guerra will come in for Underwood. That last drive, the penalties really hurt Creighton Durham Hall. They had the, the intentional grounding penalty and then the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that cost them about 30 yards of field position. Now, though... They've got the ground game going with 5.50 to go in the football game. Hard to take Underwood off of the field there. He had something going, but they'll give him a quick breather and spell him with Zion Guerra. Underwood looks good. We've had really good running backs these past few years with Creed Durham Hall, Nash, Udoibach, both very good players. First and 10 from the 34. Not sure if they had an issue with the chains, but now we're ready to go. Now they're still holding up the play. I think it was a question from the Totino Grace sidelines. A little indecision here on first down, but hopefully Callahan has it squared away. There's the whistle, and we're ready to get back to work. The Raiders are on a drive. The offensive line is working hard. Guerra on the carry. He goes across the 35 now. Guerra Flag comes in. Flag on the play. Let's check this flag after the run by Guerra. Would have picked up a couple of yards. We know what it normally means when that flag is thrown in that area on a running play. Let's check with our official holding against Creighton Durham Hall. Doggone it. They were driving down the field and this one's going to cost them 10 yards. It'll be first and 20. Now back at the 44-yard line. Ouch. Underwood comes back in. Guerra goes to the sidelines. Listen to these fans. Football is back. From the 45-yard line, second, uh, I should say, first and 21. Here we go. Callahan. He'll throw. He rolls to his right. He's hit as he throws, but he finds his man. It's Newton at the 35. He goes back a step or two before he's tackled. But Newton come, uh, makes the reception, and he was chased down by Isaac Richards after a gain of eight yards. Good gain on first down. It'll be second down and 12 for Crean Durham Hall. That's the, just what they needed. Just about negates that holding penalty. Just about eight yards after a 10-yard penalty. They mark it at the 37-yard line. Second down and 13. Inside of five minutes left in the game. Close one. Two top five teams going at it. Callahan, the quarterback. Under center. He hands off. Look at Underwood go across the 35. They'll mark him down all the way at the 32-yard line. Good spot for the Raiders. He picks up five yards. It'll be uh, third down and eight. Gain of four on the play. Patrick Dorn on the tackle. Now 4.30 left in this fourth quarter. Raiders have good punters and kickers, but probably four down territory after the holding penalty. That does all the talking. Listen to these fans. Raiders need nine yards. Callahan hands off and look at that it's Underwood inside the 20 and a first down for the Raiders Underwood is carrying the Raiders down the field 
3.59 left in the fourth quarter. And a first down marked at the 15-yard line as Underwood goes up the near sideline and picks up the first down. And the, Ra the Raiders got moved back 10 yards by that holding penalty. They pick up eight yards through the air and then back-to-back -back runs by Underwood. Sets up first and 10 from the 15-yard line. I know what I'm doing. I'm feeding Underwood here. He's on fire. Underwood the tailback behind Callahan. 3.59 to go. First and 10. Yes, Underwood gets it. And he stood up at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10. Bollinger goes back to the well. And Underwood gets stuffed on the play by one of the big boys inside by Totino Grace. No gain on the play. Tackled by Jake Park. Jake Park on the tackle. One of the big dogs inside. 3.37 to go. Boy, that clock is going fast. The Raiders keeping it on the ground. Second and 10. Raiders looking for a statement win to open up 2017. Callahan surveys the defense on second down. He drops back, has time, puts it up far side, and it's incomplete. A little contact towards the tail end of that play. Isaac Richards was defending Newton, and the pass is incomplete. It's third down. Keep in mind, this looms large. The Eagles missed an extra point. It was actually blocked by Creighton Durham Hall earlier on. That one point looms large right now because the Raiders could tie it with a field goal. 3.17 to go. It's third down. Great crowd here tonight. I've got goosebumps. Callahan. Hands off Underwood, and he can't break free of that interior lineman for Underwood Totino Grace. Carrying. Underwood, a short gain before Zach Collins chased him down. Fourth down. Big tackle for Collins. It's fourth down, and let's see how much confidence Brooks has in the kicking game here. It's within range if you wanted to go for this field goal, or you put it up, try to throw the ball into the end zone. Udoibach would be who I'd look for in the end zone. 2.49 to go. After Underwood was stuffed. Ratja Cobb made a 25-yarder, missed a 35-yarder. This kick would be from about that 35-yard spot, a little bit further even than that. I think they're going to wind it down and take a timeout and talk this over. So what on earth do you do here from the 15-yard line? Fourth and 10, and you're 15 yards out. I think maybe you send the field goal kicker out and see if he can tie the game and be a hero for you. It's a tough, tough call here for Brooks Bollinger. He'll take a timeout and he'll talk about it. You have a quarterback that doesn't have a lot of experience, but you have a wide receiver who's six foot four <laughs> and who can go up and make a play for you. You have a running game that's gotten you this far. But I'm not so sure that I don't try for the field goal heroics here. The question is, how much do you trust your long snapper, holder, and field goal kicker to make a kick here late and tie this thing up? They're really talking this one over during this timeout. Creighton Durham Hall is out of timeouts now with 2.28 to go. The Eagles still have two in their back pocket. Looks like they're going to go for it. Callahan, the quarterback, comes out. It's fourth down. Whoa, Nelly. Udoibach to the left. Newton to the left. Mooney, the tight end in there, as well as Prince. Shotgun. Underwood is the running back. Here we go. Fourth and ten. Callahan drops back. He rolls to his right. Got a block. Puts it up, and it's going to be incomplete. Tried to find Newton, and there's going to be a penalty after the play. It's going to be against. It's going to be against Bergman. After the play, Bergman called for a unsportsmanlike conduct as he got in the face of Newton. But it's after the play. It'll push Totino Grace back. But it was definitely after the conclusion of the play and the incomplete pass. 
So it will be. I'd imagine Totino Grace's football, but they are going to lose half the distance to their goal here from the 15-yard line. And it's first down. And we're going to need some defense. Already called the first down for Totino Grace. They'll take it over at their seven-yard line. Boy, Callahan didn't get much on that throw as he was looking for Newton. He was well covered, and as soon as the pass was incomplete, he had Bergman all over him, so it costs Totino Grace and the Eagles seven yards, but that's something they'll gladly take because the Raiders have no timeouts. There's only 2.23 left in the game, and the Eagles have that potent running game that they're known for. Anson, Kamara, and Jam, and Cameron White, who's also really credited himself well today but earlier on a fumble on this side of the field for the Eagles as well 223 to go Schuler, the quarterback makes sure that everybody's on the same page and goes under center from the seven yard line they'll run it with the trusty Hansen he'll bounce it outside across the 10 yard line to the 11 a gain of four yards on first down Hansen for the veteran Hansen so Brooks Bollinger deciding to roll the dice and go for it on fourth and 10 from the 15 just not feeling good about his chances to tie it with a field goal trusting his quarterback Callahan instead And we had an injury. And it was Charlie Dennis who was dinged up on the play. Prince will come in to spell him. And they'll wind the clock now from the two-minute mark. First down just about wins it here for Totino Grace. It would win it. Second down and step. They would be able to kneel their way to a 1-0 mark in 2017. Their last time out, they defeated Eden Prairie. That was the last game of for last season for Creed Durham Hall as well. They fell to Eden Prairie. Minute 35 to go. And they'll hand it off again. Hansen back to the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got past that. And it'll be third down. On the carry. With a stop here, they would be forced to punt with about 20 seconds, maybe inside of 20 seconds left on that game clock. It's going to be awfully close, though. Getting down to the point where for the Raiders to pull this thing off, they're going to need something awfully dramatic to take place. 55 seconds left now. It's third and five from the 13, and now a timeout taken by Totino Grace. They want to make sure they're on the same page for this timeout next play Totino call. Grace. Jeff Ferguson is their head coach. I was updating earlier on the scoreboard from around town. I mentioned it's a busy day with the Fair, the Twins, the Saints, the Vikings, and the Gophers playing. The Gophers win 17-7. to It looks like the Vikings... With a minute to go in their preseason finale, you're going to lose to the Dolphins right now, 30 to 9, and Miami with the football. And here, Totino Grace, 13 to 10 lead. Here on our inaugural broadcast of season three with Raider football and TJSportsOnline.net. It's really our distinct pleasure to bring you these games. And this was an exciting one. We'll see if the Raiders can make something happen here force a turnover strip the ball loose we saw them do that in the first half you know they're going to be clawing at that ball trying to make a miracle happen here week one Raiders were up 10-0 before Totino Grace stormed back and scored 13 unanswered Schuler under center, trying to draw the Raiders off sides. They didn't bite for it. They'll run it, and the Raiders' defense is going to hold up. This is going to be well short of the first down. Out to the 14-yard line goes, I believe it was Jam. Hansen on the carry. Yeah, it was Hansen. 37 seconds left on the game clock. 
Two yards on the play. Fourth down. Dave Schwinn on the tackle. And there'll be about a five-second differential or so. You know, some teams have a play in their playbook where they run a clock out. They run around for five seconds and kill a clock. And this might be one of those times that you see that. The Eagles are going to let this clock wind down, and now they'll throw the flag for delay a game. Three seconds left. That'll be a delay a game penalty. And I, they can punt here now. It's fourth down, but you could snap the ball to the punter or a running back and let them run around for three seconds and fall down, and the game would be over. Best case scenario for Creighton Durham Hall is they punt the ball to the Raiders. I know that coaches practice plays that take... I know Jerry Kill at the U had a play that took seven seconds off the clock where there's block, you know, you set up a block, you run a player around, and uh, you wind down the last minutes of, uh, last seconds of a game. You could literally, but you want to make sure you get those three, <laughs> three seconds off the clock. You fall down and you have less than that. There's five seconds up there now. You want to make sure you get the five seconds out. Or otherwise, you turn the ball over and lose the game in a uh, very embarrassing fashion. So... They've got five seconds on the clock. It's fourth down now. And look at this. They're lining up. And they will snap the ball. And they're going to run it right into the back of the end zone and take a safety out of the back of the end zone. And the game is over. The clock strikes zero. It is a safety. Two points to Creighton Durham Hall. But it's your final score. So they did what we thought they would do. Totino Grace runs out the clock, runs out of the back of the end zone with Schuler. It's a safety, and your final score is Totino Grace 13, Creighton Durham Hall 12. Running down the scoring for you, Creighton Durham Hall got the scoring started early. Rant Jacob with a 25 yard field goal. Callahan, 23 yard touchdown pass from Udoibach after a turnover. The point after good, 10 0 in the score there. Rant Jacob misses the 35 yarder. Sam Hansen, 32 yard touchdown run. The extra point by Vettel was blocked. That made it 10 6. And Cameron White, a two-yard touchdown run on fourth down. He goes in from one yard out, makes it 13-10. to 10. Point after, obviously, good by Vettel. And the as time expired, the safety run out of the back of the end zone by Schuler. It was a great game, a uh, close game, just as many uh, people thought it would be. It did not disappoint. But in the end, Totino Grace improves their record. To 1 0. Creed Durham Hall falls to 0 and 1. Our engineer tonight has been Glenn Thompson. I'm Matt Nelson. Tonight's broadcast again brought to you by the Hitchcock Law Firm and Hitchcock Real Estate. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. We'll be with you for all four home games from O'Shaughnessy Stadium at the University of St. Thomas again for Glenn, Tom, uh, Glenn Thompson. I'm Matt Nelson for TJ Sports Online and Creed Durham Hall High School. We hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. 13 12, your final score is Totino Grace defeats Creed Durham Hall. Have a great night and go Raiders!